Welcome, Bastronauts. This is Teal's Bass Galaxy, an endless dimension of fishing legends and degenerates connecting through raw, real, in-person conversations and stories. No, this is not your average fishing podcast. There's no rules. There's no limits. Three, two, one, blast off. This podcast is intended for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Teal's Bass Galaxy is now offering intergalactic merchandise. That's right. We got apparel now, baby. Check out our website. We got a variety of apparel. Hats, bucket hats, sweatshirts, t-shirts, you know. All, all the finest goods. So stop on our website, tealsbassgalaxy.com, click on the apparel tab, and start looking good, baby. Attention all Bastronauts. This podcast is supported by the Bass Galaxy's title sponsor, Waypoint Angler Supply, the Midwest's new landing pad for hardcore anglers just like you and me. If you're looking for the sneaky goods you can't find anywhere else, look no further. Waypoint Angler Supply has the largest offering of JDM tackle in the Midwest, and they are right here in Minnesota on Lake Minnetonka. This is truly a place every bass fisherman in Minnesota needs to visit because we finally have a tackle shop in the state that's as dreamy as the ones you find down south. And the staff at Waypoint Angler Supply understands the various needs of us anglers, which is why you'll find the selection there so enticing. Ross and the folks at Waypoint Angler Supply are passionate about carrying the right stuff, providing an authentic customer experience, and they listen to the anglers. And it doesn't end at JDM Baits. They stock all the top U.S. brands, as well as local Minnesota brands like the Selka Fishing and Customs, Arsenal Fishing, Bait Lab Custom Swim Baits, All Terrain Tackle, Bagley Northland, Outcast Tackle, and more. So stop into their store on Lake Minnetonka or visit their website, waypointanglersupply.com. That's waypointanglersupply.com. Use the code GALAXY2024 to save 20% on your next order at Waypoint. The Bass Galaxy is also supported by Veselka Fishing and Customs, Supreme Lending, Dream Team, Lake Country Insurance Services, My Wedge Motor Support, Supreme Lure Company, just north of Memphis, barbecue and catering. Thank you. Brian, new, not used. <laughs> I don't know. You, dude? I'm good, dude. Good. I'm good. Uh, feel a little used at the moment. <laughs> My head's going in and out. Uh, this pollen's killing me. That's what it is? Yeah. You know, I sp- yeah, you get past the tundra belt, it starts getting green. I, that makes a lot of sense why my, my nose is yeah, doing that. Yeah, it's, it's been, I don't know, two weeks. It's never hit me like this, uh, but, yeah, so we roll on with it. Well, you ride pretty hard on the road here, there, yeah. you know, everywhere. So. Not a lot of breaks. Yeah, dude. <laughs> no. Well, this time means a lot to me, so thank you yeah, for taking the time. Yeah. I've been watching you quite some time, and um, Brian Thrift is, like, one of my favorite anglers, and... Uh, you're like the spawn of that dude, aren't you? You I, hate that, or do you hate? No, not say that? not at all. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I mean, I guess you could say it's kind of somewhat of an honor, you know. Um, I mean, because he's one of the best to ever play the game, and uh, you know, I was very fortunate, uh, you know, to become great friends with him at a at an early age, and and learned a lot from him, and and, and still do. I mean, we talk three or four times every day, That's and awesome. uh, I mean, he's he's one of my best friends in the world. And, uh, you know, to say that one of your best friends in the world is one of the best at anything in the world is pretty cool. That is really cool, man. So you're living in South Carolina right now, but let's, let's like go back to like, you know, maybe not diapers. You probably don't remember, but, um, you know, how you got into the sport of bass fishing and like, how, how did, 
how did that all come about for you? Yeah, so, you know, I grew up on Lake Wiley, uh, you know, with my family and uh, lived on the lake in the South Fork River. And we just, you know, me and my brothers, we just fished, you know, and we didn't care what we caught. We just fished. And, uh, you know, I was probably somewhere around five, six, it was probably six or seven. Uh, you know, there was a tackle store opened up the street from my house and, you know, back in 1996, uh, you know, your seven, eight year old kid could walk a mile and a half up the road and you didn't really worry about anything. And, uh, yeah, I went up there and hung out and, and, you know, it was obviously it's a tackle store. A lot of bass fishermen hang out there and, uh, you know, it kind of started leaning towards more bass fishing at that point. Uh, actually the first job I ever had was, sweeping the floors and taking out the trash there at Earl's Bait and Tackle. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, great friends. But, you know, a lot of the guys that I met there were actually in my wedding a few years ago. So really? lifelong friends. And, and you know, it, it, it helped carve the path, you know, for my future in my career. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did they teach you how to kill bugs too? No, no. Um, whenever I moved, we, you know, married my wife. She was from the Lake Mary, Murray area and uh, moved down there the, after my first year on the elites. And uh, her uncle owns a pest control business. And I'm not the guy that can sit around. You know, I've got to be doing something, whether it's fishing or something around the house or working and getting uh doing stuff around the house gets old sometimes so i go to work during off season and uh you know i work for jra uh exterminating during off season kill a lot of bugs and uh every now and then i go fishing that makes me think of a question because like i had an experience one time where um like i, I just remember i was sleeping i was a kid in my room it was like freshman year of high school and i was <laughs> sleeping and i just remember feeling this pain like while i'm sleeping and it was like a traumatic experience. I wake up and there's a wasp crawling on my face. That doesn't sound like a good experience. It's real no. bad to wake up to that. So I freaking throw it off. I scream like a little kid. My dad comes down. He gets stung in the foot, stepping on him. And like, you're, you're walking into the belly of the beast, you know, yeah. every fucking day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we see some <laughs> some crazy stuff, you know. We yeah. really do. But what's uh, the craziest shit you've ever seen? Oh man, so nothing really scares me much. But I don't do snakes. If it's sitting right over there and I know it's there, I'm good. As long as he don't come close. Yeah. And as long as he doesn't surprise me. But you know, we do a lot of you know crawling in crawl spaces under under houses. And let me tell you. Every house, there's a snake under. What? Every house, there's a snake under. You may not see him, but he's there. But he's there. And, uh, you know, when you're looking around, looking for termites, whatever it is, and, and then all of a sudden, ooh, there's Mr. Uh, no Shoulders Ugh. in your face. Dude, I'm getting yeah, 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 yeah. That's not cool. Mm. But, hey, we do get calls there in people's houses, too. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't mess with, I don't take those calls. Yeah. Jeez, dude. I could not do your job. No, no, no it, it's, uh, no. you know, it's it, it, obviously it sounds worse than it is, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't do snakes. Bugs don't bother me. Snakes like you get me. Bugs plus snakes plus claustrophobia in a crawl space. Like, oh, uh, so like we, you can't even run. You're crawling. Oh, no, yeah. You're, that you're snake's there. faster than you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. You, uh-uh. There's a lot of very tight crawl spaces. I mean, I've had them Ugh. like one one this this past off season. Um, I actually got stuck. I mean, it was just for a second, but I was stuck. It was that low to the ground. I mean, it was, you know, the house was so old. It was, uh, it didn't have like a a dug foundation. It was sitting on rocks, literally sitting on rocks. And I mean, it's it was all I can do. It was so low. The last guy that went to do the inspection couldn't do it that's why i got to do it because i'm a small guy and uh but yeah i got stuck you got balls dude my vagina's swelling just hearing <laughs> that dude holy shit oh uh, yeah well you know the older i get the i think they shrink a little but um they they they're pretty big you know um but they're they're all big certain. bulls big bulls <laughs> yes uh but no there's like i said you know snakes really about the only things that bother me 
The one one story though, a couple of years ago, it was an old historic house, uh, foundation on rocks again, but it's a little higher. And you know, I'm, I'm doing a termite inspection, so you know, you basically you go crawl under and you look everywhere for termite tubing, any damage, termite damage, and, and you know that's what you look for. So I crawl under and you know I open the door and I stick my head in. I look, you know, all right, we're all clear. As soon as I stick my head in. It was like snake skin, snake skin, snake skin, snake skin. Well, I got to the end, all the way finished, and I was like, I haven't looked for a termite yet. All I was doing, was, so I had to turn around and do it the whole thing over again. And I like, I, I lost count at like seventy-five snake skins that I seen. I never actually saw a living snake, but <laughs> they were there. I promise. Um, dude, no. Yeah, no, it's dude, no. It sounds uh-huh. worse than it is, you know. It uh. But I don't know, it, man. I don't know. It sounds like it would be as bad. I feel like it'd be worse than you telling me right now. Uh, if I was sitting in that crawl space looking at that, it yeah. sounds terrifying. What, what's dude. crazy though, Justin? You know, my my boss. He, you know, he's done it his whole life, and uh, like he walk right by and say, "Oh, look, there he is." <laughs> he like go back and forth or crawl, I should say, back and forth. Never mess. Like they don't mess with you, but. Isn't I there, still I don't I don't like that theory. No, isn't well, there a way to like tame them? Like with like if you had a flute, like, yeah, you could like I, fucking make I'm them. I'm not sure. Like, I think you got to be in India for that. Kenny yeah. G, like with yeah. the sax, if a saxophone works like really good from what I've heard. But I'm not built for that shit. Dude. No, I, I've never took that path. I've never tried that. So, um, what kind of snakes are they? A lot of bull snakes, rat snakes. Uh, they're snakes. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Things that move without legs. Snake is a snake is a snake. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I mean, you know, normally they're like black snakes or something like oh, that. Okay. You know. Yeah. But I don't care. Right. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> He's a snake. <laughs> I know. For me, so I just moved down to Missouri a month ago. So yeah. for us moving down there, we got copperheads and all that mm-hmm. stuff now. And so I bull hunt. And there's a lot of public land to hunt around here. And I keep hearing from a lot of the locals, you got to watch, you mm-hmm. know, where you're going. Because there are a lot of snakes around. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Where my uh, knee highs and. Yeah. yeah. I push mowed my I push mowed my grass and I was mowing last year. Little gardener snake come out. Not a little one, biggest I'd oh, ever seen. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like I, like hit something, and like three feet away, the grass starts moving. <laughs> I sucked one up, killed it, but I didn't see it. I went and put steel toes on because I was not <laughs> going to mow the rest of that grass that day without steel toes. Oh, like I was ready. Wow. Like, mm-mm. so what if he got you on like the ankle or something? See, we, like my friends and I, when you're in that alpha mode of like high school, I remember we were camping at my buddy's place. Like out, he had some land or whatever, and you get me in that alpha phase around some dudes and like, let's eat it. Right. When yeah. we it. Like yeah. we ate. I remember when we were in high school, just dumb. Yeah. We ate a snake. We cooked it over the fire and we each ate it. That little sounds ones. terrible. Supposedly, they taste pretty good. Right. Supposedly, they're pretty dang good. Yeah. Yeah. I, not I a lot of fat on them, you know? Pretty lean yeah. meat. I'm going to yeah. stick to beef. Yes. Beef and fish. Well, it, yes. it was more so one of those, like, do it one time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Well, some so, things you just don't ever try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stay away from the snake of all sorts. I don't do Dude, I'm not built for that. Do you ever do you ever have one like try to bite you or like chase you or nah. like they're scared of you at least? I guess. I guess it's just like that, you know, oh, I don't want to mess with him kind of thing. Uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, you wear like freaking no. hat full hazmat suit or No. So like it, sometimes I do wear a Tyvek suit, but like it's not it's just to keep you clean, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to protect you from <laughs> from it. a any sort of bite. Got it. Got it. So like had, do you feel like that's benefited you in fishing? Like the big balls part, that's a benefit, right? You got to have nuts to fucking fish tournaments, right? I would think so. You know, yeah. take them risks. Yeah. Like, you know, fish safe. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, like I, looking back last year, you know, here we, we were at the classic. I've been calling it the ICAST of March uh, <laughs> all day because uh, fortunately, since I've started fishing the elites, I haven't had to work uh you know uh, uh, uh expo the classic expo but here i am and uh last year the after four tournaments i was 101st in the points 
And, you know, it was just – it was terrible. And then, you know, the second half was really good, and I mm-hmm. moved up and barely missed the Classic. I finished 46 in the points, and I don't know. They probably wound up taking down to 44-ish, somewhere around there. So, I just barely missed it, but I did still miss it. And I kind of look back, you know, especially in the off season, and and for some reason, I can't tell you why, I've never fished scared. I've never fished uh, really all that safe. But for some reason, I think I was somewhat fishing safe, and it didn't do very good last, you know, the first half of last year. And, you know, that's that's why I was 101st in the points. And uh, yeah, I can't put a reason, you know, I don't know what that was. You know, I knew I had a new son on the way, a new baby on the way, and fixing to buy a house. So I was just, I guess maybe that was why I was playing it safe more. But, uh, you know, once again safe wasn't very safe and uh you know i found myself at the bottom and and you know ultimately i did climb myself back up but we all make mistakes throughout life you know whatever it is and you've got to learn for those so you know you just keep putting one step forward and uh but yeah i mean you 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 can't be you've got to you've got to be able to make bold moves yeah. In a lot of different, you know, a lot of different aspects of it. I'm learning that. I mean, talking to really good guys, I mean, risk is you got to do it. Like, right. listen to your gut, you know, whatever, yeah. it, whatever <clears throat> it might be. I mean, you're gambling when you sent your entry fee in. So if oh, you yeah. think you're not when you're yeah. fishing, like, you still are. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> there's not many people that say they, they spend $70,000 to go to work and hope they get a paycheck. There's also not that many people can say that they won the first Bassmaster Elite Series event There's they two. ever fished. There's only two. I know. And I'm one of them. <laughs> I know, dude. Like, I'll cheers to that. That's like, I mean, talk about a statement. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you only get that chance one time. And it's funny, like, uh, Trey McKinney, um, you know, he, he stayed or left his boat and truck at the house and we flew out here together and um you know i don't really know trey that well i actually don't think i've ever talked to him until this week um but joyce fuentes one of you know one of my great friends talked to him all the time and you know he was a so-called rookie last year and he wins his second tournament yeah it's like i'm glad you didn't win your first one <laughs> yeah. and then trey he's a, he is a rookie you know no disrespect by that but he he is a rookie and uh he wins his second tournament this year I was like hey trey what did it take you so long? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the, you know, that's all fun and games. But, hey, hey, I'm serious. I don't want a rookie to win their first one ever no, again. You, <laughs> you know? want that belt to stay. Yeah. Because who's the other one? Um, Derek Rimmons. And, oh, yeah. and it, was, it was a long time. I mean, I say a long time ago. Um, it's been a while. Uh, Amistad. Omega I don't remember jig. when it was. It was an but, on an Omega, an Omega football jig. I know this because he's from Minnesota, and then I never heard of him ever again yeah, after that. Yeah, but you uh, you made a statement, and now you've proven you're here to stay, dude. Yeah, I hope so. You know, if if that's uh, you know, if that's where I'm supposed to be, that's where I'm going to be. And um, uh, and another thing, and this is maybe kind of goes against what people want to hear, but it's it's the way I feel. You know, it's I want to win every tournament. You know, I want to win Angler of the Year. I want to win everything there is. But at the end of the day, you know, driving home last year from the last elite, you know, I knew I missed the Classic. The only chance I had was winning the last Open, you know, at Toho or wherever we went. Harris, uh, Harris Chain. Harris, Harris yeah. Chain. That was the only chance I had. And, you know, I, I've won Open before. I've won several times in Florida. It's possible. But that's still an outside chance. But So – you know, the first half of the drive, I was really pissed off. I was like, I missed the classic. I'm pissed. But then the second half of the drive, you know, I just I, I realized, like, it sucks, but it's not the end of the world. You know, making that classic is not going to change my life. Not making it is not going to change my life. You know, I, I'm still fortunate to get out here and do this. I'm still fortunate to have, you know, family and friends and fans that support me and, and, and great sponsors. And, uh, you know, everything's going to be all good. That being said, you still don't, you've got to accept the failure, but I, I don't know. You still got to, you got to know that you just work harder, fix what, fix what went, went wrong, analyze what went wrong and try to fix it. 
That's good advice because, like, <coughs> I'm coming off my toughest season as a tournament angler in years, mm-hmm. um, and I'm not used to it. And I was really pissed about it. But yeah. Like, about a month went by, and I started just fishing four days a week mm-hmm. once the tournament season ended. And, like, about a month after that, I'm convinced it was the best thing that ever happened to me because you get stuck in a rut. You got it figured yeah. out, right? Yeah. I'm fished this way. And you fight maybe something that you shouldn't be fighting. Mm-hmm. And uh, this sport will teach you hard lessons. Yeah. And I've been taught some of those this yeah, year. Yeah, for sure. And um, yeah. so me and, and Thrift and Schmidt and, and a couple other friends, the last year we've talked about, you know, what we're doing wrong. We're making up our mind what we're going to do before we ever head to the lake, before that's we ever problem. head to the tournament. And that's, you know – at the time, it's hard to even when you're talking about it, it's hard to believe that and change that. But that's what I was doing, Me too, you man. know. <laughs> and now, I mean, everything's changing. And you know, it used to, uh, you know, we had little secrets and, and little ways we approach things, and there are no secrets anymore. And those little secrets that we had, uh, they they're definitely not secrets like they were, but even if they were, they don't work like they did. You know, now fishing is, is, is nothing like it was five years ago and it's never changed that quick. And not that I know of, not in my, however many years, you know, I've been, I'm 34 years old. I've been fishing for 30 of them. And, uh, (laughs) you know, I've been like super hardcore for, I mean, since I was probably 16, and uh, so whatever that's for 18 years and um that's a long time and in 18 years nothing's changed as quick as it has this now i would agree you know what were some of those you know since they're not secrets anymore what were some some of those things that you guys used to keep kind of close and were a big advantage for you that feels like it's it's not anymore it, what, it, like and it, this kind of goes back to the only you know you got a big set kind of deal it's yeah. like isolated targets you know whether it's a rock pile or a brush pile whatever it is i mean instead of oh i'm gonna go fish dock i'm gonna go throw top water you know on this grass line in the morning and then go fish docks the rest of the day uh which i've done that a lot and been successful in doing so but you know it, it takes a it takes a big gamble to run out it's like okay i'm gonna hit as many isolated targets as i can in a day and hope to catch five big fish and that used to, I mean, me and Thrift and Schmidt and have made a lot of money over the years doing that, but that's not the deal anymore. I mean, there's fish to be caught doing that, but it's not mm-hmm. the winning deal anymore. Sure, sure. Now the isolated targets are, you know, out in the middle of nowhere, not relating to anything. They're so relating we, to bait. Right. So the, that that structure that you guys used to be able to do milk runs on, then yeah. fish are just pressured and more roaming yeah yeah that and you know with with the scope now like on the hair lakes for particular you know for instance uh everybody's on cane piles for years well the reason you put cane piles you know on a point the fish live on the point you put the cane so that's their home that doesn't mean they're always there but that's their home so if you got this big long point and one cane pile sticking up, and you're you're the only person that knows who that is, where exactly that cast, or just a handful of people, you know, you can pull up, instead of fishing the whole point, pull up and throw over that cane pile, one or two casts, and roll on to the next one. Sure. Nowadays, that nobody, I shouldn't say nobody, but there's not as many cane piles anymore. Like, there's no, I'll never put another cane pile out. No? No. I mean, it's, it's pointless, because the first time anybody pulls up on that point they know exactly where the cane pile is right right right. you know because you used to couldn't you could see it on side hard to though but it's hard to see on side and you know scope it shows it all it It shows it all i mean literally uh the year i qualified for the leads the open at hartwell i think it was actually before that no it was that tournament it was practicing for that tournament i was running all these points and these cane piles that i knew about and, um, you know, it, I ran through everything I knew and I, now I start running random stuff and I got to where like three or four points in, I knew exactly, I can go to any point on this lake and stop. And within 
15 seconds f- show you where the cane pile is. 15 Crazy. seconds. Crazy. Probably less than that. Wow. Any point on the lake. So why why are you going to go put all the time and effort into putting out cane when you're just giving it to the rest of the world? So I'm from Minnesota. It is highly illegal <coughs> to lay cane and or anything else. If the rock's big enough, you can't even throw it in the water. Like Right. So... Walk me through, like, the laying piles process. Like, it sounds like, I just picture, like, these rednecks in the middle of the night. Pretty much. Put, loading up just a batch of timber right. oh, yeah. in a bass boat and, like, idling yeah. out and laying it down. Like, I'm going to put one on where I know I want it, but yep. I'm going to put some sneaky ones yep. in between the inside turn in this point yep. because a lot of guys won't find them, yep. you know? Yeah. What's that process like? So, so cane and brush are two completely different things. Cane is, it, it's, that's what it is. It's cane, it's bamboo. And, you know, typically it's two or three stalks is all it is. And it's just straight up. You leave the bush on it. So it is bushy. And, but it's, it's really like creating uh, one single tree, one piece mm-hmm. of timber. And so you weight the bottom and you tie, you know, you tie them somewhat together in the t- at t- up towards the top and put a, a drink bottle in it, like a 20 ounce, a two liter, typically a two liter or a, a 20 ounce drink bottle, whatever, any kind of drink bottle. And so it, you know, the drink bottle has enough flotation, it makes it stand up. Oh. So a cane pile is not a brush pile. A cane pile is essentially a tree, a one, one tree, yeah. one tree piece of timber easier to lay than a brush pile uh s- somewhat yeah because it's, it's lighter it's not a, it's a it's easier to get around you put um, them in a bucket with dirt yeah i mean or <laughs> concrete yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 i mean some Crazy. people they'll take a five gallon bucket and put the stalks in it and pour concrete in it and you let it set up and then take it out there and obviously put the the uh you know the bottle in the top to to stand it up but like I, anytime I put cane out, you know, I, I use center blocks and I would use, I would tie to the block and then tie, uh, drill holes in the cane and I would use wire and, uh, you know, that way. So if you, if you concrete it into the bucket, then like, it's not going to have, however, if the bucket lays, you know, down like that, it's going to be hard. That bottle it's not going to stand it up very good. So if you leave both sides you know mm-hmm. the bottle side and the weight side it doesn't matter how it lays it's going to stand up sure so i qualified for two national championships on hartwell got my dick kicked in in both of them but i know like looking at cane like you'll find some that's got leaves on it yeah that's like yeah, yeah that's stuff, fresh right? yeah and dude this is like a whole new world for for us mm-hmm. like you the fresh stuff is like there's like brush piles or cane piles, what have you, that you put out like a week before the tournament. And there's like, isn't there like something to that? Yeah, I mean the fr- you know, a lot of people think oh it needs to be be there. It's not hasn't been there long enough. You know, people say oh that dock's too new. They just built it. That that's not accurate. You know, sure, it, sure. it's not the the fresher it is, the bushier it is. Now, I'm not saying you put it out today and you're going to catch them this afternoon, but I have. <laughs> I have. <laughs> but I mean, I the have. fish the fish live on that point. All you're doing is creating a structure. Point. You know, it, it's, oh, here's a, you know, here's. Oh, a stoplight here's, here. Yeah. 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 I mean, how many times, you know, especially being up north, I know you've seen you're fishing a place and, oh, there's, on my 2D, there's a smallmouth coming up to my boat. Yeah. I mean, how, how much more fresh can you get? Right. It's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, there was a, a Farswood Cup at Lake Murray. Michael Bennett won? No, Michael. Maybe. I don't remember. I was in high school. I think Michael Bennett did win. Yeah. That- but anyways, um, I remember Dion Hibden and some other guys. I know Dion. Like, he put Brush out in practice and made top ten. Damn. Yeah. On the Brush he put out in practice. And he was taking, and I've done this too. It's obviously, a, it's more of a temporary thing. It's not going to last really long. Like if you're wanting to put out brush at your, low, at your house, uh, that's not the way to do it. But you just take, go cut your brush um, and take riprap. 
wherever you might get that <laughs> and uh duct tape it duct just duct do you trailer your big outboard then you need the my wedge motor support my wedge keeps even the heaviest motors safe and secure on the trailer and talk about easy up with the motor on with the my wedge back down ready to roll and my wedge is built to last it won't rot it won't split it won't fail guaranteed Pop on my wedge centering clips for lateral stability and you're good to go. My wedge, security in a snap. To order yours, go to mywedge.com. Are you ready to reel in your next home purchase or refinance? Supreme Lending's dream team can help guide you through the entire mortgage process from pre-qualification to closing. They have a wide variety of home loan programs in their tackle box, including down payment assistance and first time home buyer options. Just ask me. I trusted Aaron Dagus, a bass fisherman just like you and me, and Supreme Lending's Dream Team to help finance my first home. Contact Aaron Dagus and the Dream Team today by scanning the QR code or giving them a call at 763 763- Three two six zero six seven seven. That's seven six three three two six zero six seven seven. Did I catch a seven in there? Or visit their website, AaronDagus.SupremeLending.com. That's A A R O N D A E G E S dot SupremeLending.com tape it to the you know once again it's not gonna last that long but it'll last a week or two that's all you need yeah 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 i'm only here a week <laughs> that's right you know? dude i'm gonna let you guys talk i gotta pee i don't know why i didn't yeah. before but i'll let you guys roll i'll be right back all right so what do you do in your spare time do a little, a little tackle man dude like yes so i like hunting yeah. i was big into it in high school and then i got out and to the real world and uh yeah, I just rather fish now. Yeah. So you know, I you know hanging out with the family, and uh, that's about family work and fishing. You know, it, honestly, I think I like tinkering with baits yeah. more than I do fishing. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you, you know, it, and it's it's pretty awesome working with Spro. I mean, we've got a lot of projects in the works, and uh, yeah, I mean that's I wake up thinking about baits. I go to sleep thinking about baits. You know how I get these ideas of completely new things that we've never seen in the market and then also you know things that we do see tweaking them and making them better and uh you know you especially now you see all this crazy stuff coming from japan and, it's, and when it comes to tackle yeah, i mean there's not much that i don't know about baits that are made i'm not saying i know everything i'm saying if it's a bait that has been had any publicity at all yeah anywhere in the world I probably know a little bit about it. Oh, okay. You know why I know that? Because <laughs> when I talked to him yesterday and I said, hey, I got a shop up north that's got, like, all the Japanese stuff, and I brought a box of it down, like, you need anything? First thing he says, you got them full casts? <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah. what? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, you do know your shit because I, I do. I admit, I've talked to a lot of people. No one's ever heard of that lure. Yeah, yeah, it, and I've known about that for at least two years. Well, that's because you know that Taku guy, yeah, all right? Yeah. Don't well, no, I mean, I knew it before I knew Taku. You know, really? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, but I mean, I'm up on the Japanese stuff, dude. You know your stuff. I I'm a crackhead just like you. Yeah. So I can I can respect that. That's what he caught 40 pounds on, right? I don't, I mean, honestly, I don't watch live because, and I, well, he I wasn't should. on live when he caught 40 pounds. He wasn't on camera. The so next day, he I, had it tied up. Yeah, all I seen was going over social media was a screenshot of a picture somebody seen on live, or they seen, they were watching live and seen it laying on his deck, and it was a screenshot. That's, that's the only way I knew Taku was using it at Fort. Oh. Um, <laughs> But like Kenta, I talk to Kenta all the time, and uh, yeah, I, I like Kenta. He's, uh, yeah, I've been talking to him about it for a year, and um, it's it's got its place. I don't know exactly where it is, but it definitely has its place. I think it's got multiple places. Um, I don't know what I do with the little one, but how the hell do you do the big one? How, how do so you I know, throw one of them? I know the Japanese they they call it leaderless drop shot. And essentially, you could say it's like a flick shake style head, but 
it, it's just literally it's a leaderless drop shot you got your drop shot hook whatever nose hook you want to use you you hook it up in it and then you put some weight uh, you, you just tie, put a weight on the hook you know uh oh there's on the hook yeah on the line tie yeah. i got you yeah so it, it flexes you know i guess you could say it's huh. similar to like the uh the tokyo rig style deal i got but you, you don't have that you don't have that hard leader it, it's the, yeah. the weights directly to the line tie because i was thinking with that rod through it that you'd put a nail weight in it and yeah. then yeah yeah you could and, and i've actually made like the the dice stuff i made those myself and uh i've done some tricky stuff you know uh playing with them i haven't caught fish on them but but i will have you caught fish on the regular dice yet? Mm, no, I, I can't make myself pay that much for four little baits. I but, mean, you can catch forty smallmouth on one of those, just so you know. Well, I mean, hey, just I, the bluegills will tear yeah, them up. That's yeah, tear, yeah, yeah. Don't throw them around bluegills. You right. catch all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I haven't made myself actually buy the original dice, but I can make the same yeah, you're thing. Making them. Yeah. They, yeah, I mean, I got a bag full of them <laughs> that I made for 30 minutes of time. Well, what I like about you compared to other fishermen, and maybe you'd agree with me, Cody, is your spectrum of what you're willing to do is endless. I don't think there's anything you're willing to not do, like to catch a bass. Not really. You know, I mean, there's there's some things that I won't do, <laughs> but it has nothing to do with technique. <laughs> um you know, I uh, I tell you what I'm not going to do is go buy waypoints <laughs> and do that. That's different. That's <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I wasn't. That was no, I, I, was, ball, I like, wasn't hey. either. I wasn't either. I was supposed to be kind of funny. But You're you know, way too good to pay for them. Dude. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, no. You uh, know some guys who do, though? I mean, there's rumors. The fucking uh, sleazeball There's a bullshit. lot of rumors. Uh, and Fuck them guys. Yeah. On the record. Yeah. 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 It, it definitely happens for sure. And, it, and it's sad, but hey, whatever. You got to sleep at night. Ah, dude, I love right. my sleep at night. Yeah. 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 So. Um, but no, I mean, you know, the, the Japanese baits. Like, it's weird because, you know, they, their fishing sucks. Yeah, it does. I mean, I've never been. I've just heard stories, but their fishing sucks over there. I mean, a bass is, is they don't they the, the fishermen love them, but a bass is, is a invasive species. Like I think it's a law that you're supposed to kill them when you catch them. Um, I think that's also why you don't see a lot of a lot of the Japanese videos. You don't see the release because it's illegal. Oh my, what is wrong with those? I, I like those guys, man. Who makes that? that no, it's democracy? not the anglers. It's not the anglers. Right. Isn't it a democracy there? That sounds like some commie bullshit. Well, it's kind of ass backwards from how it is here because we're that way with carp versus yeah. carp over there. They're yeah, I mean, a delicacy, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, they breed them. You know, you got the koi fish that are beautiful. Yeah, they're sacred. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I they think eat poop off the bottom. You know, <laughs> yeah. Literally, do. we got poop baits for for bass now. Yes, we do. I'm not saying a bass won't, you know, if he's hungry, eat a piece of shit a time or two. But <laughs> I thought it was a crawfish or something. Yeah, you, know? you and that's one thing. You know, we all say, oh, they think this is that, and they think that is this. They think a jig's, a, you know, a crawfish, but this guy says it's brims. It's like, no, they think it's food. <laughs> what do they think a fuzzy ball is? Food. It's something different. It looks like a, they think it's food. Baby crawfish. Like, dude, the smallies eat. think it's a baby. Little baby crawfish, short drop shot leader. They think it's like, food. Right. Yeah, they think it's food. Like it's just the opportunity. It's something breezing at them, and yeah. that's what their food does. Yeah, yeah. Gills flashing. Yeah. I mean, you can't look at that and say, "Oh, that's a crawfish." <laughs> you can't. I mean, maybe a sea urchin. <laughs> that's what it looks like. Yeah, it is. That's what that's what I call it. You know. Yeah, it looks but, like uh, an urchin. Yeah, like saltwater type yeah. deal, but. So I, I, I don't know this to be fact, but I actually heard today from a somebody that knows what they're talking about, Japanese person, um, that that is the original. That like that's what OG dice. that's what started the dice. That's been out for a lot of years. So this is the flag to the Berkeley Nessie. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, so exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Dude, I just got but, respect for them boys over there. Oh, yeah, and, and I think the fishing sucks so bad is, <laughs> is why they come up with this stuff. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, myself, I'm always trying to figure out how to make something better. Uh, and I think 
a lot of i'm not going to say most but a lot of anglers do oh yeah and you know obviously if the fishing gets tougher and tougher and tougher you got to try, try more and more things they get conditioned yeah. and you would know better than me i mean us up in minnesota our bass are still pretty dumb yeah but yeah i mean you a lot of times it's froze over for months Forget that. Uh, forget. Do y'all nice rest? Yeah, y'all have a season too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, closed season. Mm-hmm. No. So, Hopefully I mean, it's that's a. I, honestly, I would kind of hate to say because I couldn't imagine not legally being able to go bass fishing, mm-hmm. but I, I would like to see it happen across the country. I think. I, I mean, think maybe, maybe that's premature. Good. I'm all about it. Yeah. I mean, if, if it's, let's just say it's a month. Well, you, you guys know. don't fish that hard in the winter. I've been down there. Yeah. Nobody else. Yeah. Yeah, we do. It's, yeah. There's it, a lot of t- wintertime tournaments around the house. It's beautiful down there in the winter. South Carolina kind of reminds me of Minnesota. The only difference seems to be red clay. And we the, have a and lot the of age of the buildings. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we like growing up Lake Norman, Lake Wiley, winter tournament every, you know, there's two weekdays, both days on the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm in big ones, you know, like yeah. the winter tournaments set at Norman are, you know, over a hundred boats on average, probably, or somewhere probably around a hundred boats. What's up with the whole crossbreeding thing with like the genetics? I was watching a study about the guys talking about spotted bass and how they're slowly breeding largemouth like out of existence yeah, and the size of them and too. stuff. Are you seeing that? Uh, then yeah. Kentucky's taking over. So. I'm not a biologist, but oh, you know, I know, I know a friend of mine a long time ago. I was in high school again. He caught the uh, North Carolina state record spotted bass. It was like a six something. Yeah. And uh, since then, it's been broke many, many times. But they, it's. I don't think it'll ever truly be broke because I don't know if back then they didn't do genetic testing. Maybe that was, maybe it was not, not taking anything from his record but by any means. But the early 2000s, we have a lot more technology nowadays. Mm. So getting back to all the ones that have broke it, you know, they do this genetic testing and they're not 100% spotted bass. They're crossed with largemouth to an yeah, extent. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I can't say 50-50 or 10-90, what, whatever it may be, but there's been a lot of six to seven even bigger pounds spotted bass called out of lake norman and they i don't i don't think it'll ever be broken noted noted so like what was the biggest challenge for you coming like up north and like the northern swing because like when i go down south like those lakes are it's different way different right and i think about a southern guy coming north and he might think the same thing except like you come to our largemouth bodies of water they look a little bit florida ish is about the only yeah like for sure crossover i've seen yeah and, and you know i i fished uh champlain several times as a co-angler so i kind of got a little bit you know a knowledge there and uh really my first first couple times up north um you know on the leads i didn't do that great and you know i run with austin felix and jake whitaker and also obviously austin felix knows knows up north yeah he's really and good. <laughs> uh you know he's he's threw me a lot of bones good. so good. you know I, I can't take a lot of credit you know yeah. I, I still go make them bite and and i jerk and reel them in but <laughs> other than that you know i i owe all that to felix is there any like what i'm curious about is like i hear old stories like about minnesota tournament bass fishing where you know guys came up to lake minnetonka and kind of opened up the lake a little bit like showed those guys some new techniques has there any been any the has there been any like southern techniques that you've made work that are like non-traditional up north or are you i'm sure there are but i can't really i mean you know well, everybody knows the Carolina rig up. It's up now. North. We that's, do. That's not. That's not. <laughs> but that secret. was one thing that um, ran. God, I can't remember. Peter T brought yeah. it to Tonka at the time. Not a lot of guys were yeah. throwing that rig. This yeah. is back when everything was new and right. cool, right? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Hmm. I mean, you know, that's a southern technique, and I, you know, I didn't figure it out by any means. I mean, everybody knows to throw a Carolina. You don't go. That's a great. You don't go smallmouth fishery without a Carolina rig speed crawl. You know. Okay, so a lot of people probably don't do that up where we're from. 
and that's my i like doing that. yeah so yeah yeah, I hope you're taking notes, ladies and gentlemen. That's a yep. And, and it's you crowd. know, it's not a. I mean, there's plenty of other baits, but I mean, that's like the tried and true. You know, that's what you ever it, see rig a swim bait. I, I haven't. I know. I know. Key. I've heard. Yeah, yeah. Um, Speed craw and a swim bait are kind of yeah, like the yeah, two. Yeah, I know for a lot of people do that. A Kitek, you know. Sure, sure. Um, I, I personally haven't. I don't know why. I mean, it would look a lot like a goby. Uh, that uh duo realis what is it um one with the little fins and the weird tail that swimmer they make boo star wake is the best sea rig and swim hmm. bait i've thrown hovers nice yeah on slow pull it yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I'm a fan of stays the, upright fan of the old bellows gill yeah oh yeah sure sure i huh. didn't tear them every fucking cast it'd be God, fine. they smell so bad yeah oh. screw lock hooks the deal for those they smell so bad Oh yeah, Fish and they're so greasy. Yeah, ribbed. But, yeah, who cares? ribbed for yeah. her pleasure. For her pleasure, yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. you beat me to it. Some do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> bringing the big girls out. <laughs> but um, no, I you know I don't. At sea rig is probably what I throw the least for Carolina or, or uh, for, for smallmouth. But I'm not going to go fishing without it. You yeah. know, it, it's the that's what I grab when it's too rough to do anything else. You know, it's too rough to scope. It's it's an efficient. You know, I mean, well, way look to at fish, look man. at Felix. You know, at when he won at um, Oahu the other yeah, year, that like, it yeah, was, yeah. but it was the, it was too rough to scope on day two, and he caught the biggest bag of the tournament on <laughs> Carolina rig. Yeah, yeah. That weight he's thrown, that Ryugi. Yeah, uh, yeah. The beat, it's le, it's legit. Yeah, I got me a bunch of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Might have to steal some of them from you. Yeah. Well, I don't got enough for you to steal. Them, <laughs> you're gonna need to get your own. They got them at Waypoint. You can use my code to save twenty percent, Bob. Oh, perfect. There you go. Yeah. There you go. He was teaching me. Uh, we did some arts and crafts. This guy's like good with soft plastics. So, yeah. Uh, he taught me how to pour tubes. He like, I had a tube that they don't make no more. Snack Daddy tubes. Guy like had a heart attack or something. But they made. He made a color that's like money on the yeah. lax. I like, can't get them anymore. I'm like, yeah. dude, can you match this two colors? He's like, yeah. I'm like, fuck, you can. He fucking comes into my garage yep. and we like pour for 20 minutes yeah. and he's got it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But um, you ever mess with like making your own? You're a tinker, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you know, uh, not a lot with plastics. I cut them and do a lot of things to them. Um, but I'm probably fixing to start doing more stuff stuff with plastics uh you know because i'm working with sproda and mm-hmm, and nori's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh to um oh, cool. you know do a lot of plastic baits so he's gonna start working on that more but yeah i mean when it comes to like jig heads and and jigs and and hard baits like i've i've done it all That's you know cool. i um you know waiting there's I, there's so many different ways to wait baits you know some baits you wait this way some other baits you wait this way and different ways to wait certain baits you know it it does different things you know there's a one cool thing and it's not a super big secret but a lot of people don't do it or know the trick is waiting like crankbaits with a mineral oil not lead yeah. or tungsten you like use drilling them. them and then yeah filling them? yeah yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. so and there's certain baits that you can't like uh, for instance, a 10 XD, you know, I want to do, I did do a 10 XD, but it has a transfer. Well, the transfer is opened. So when you put mineral oil in there, um, it, it, it ruins the transfer. So ah. instead of it, like, you can't cast it, like it, it ruins the cast completely. Luckily I only tried it on one instead of like 20 before I tried it, but no, to, to do it, you know, it doesn't work on every bait. And if, if a bait has a transfer, I definitely would not recommend doing it because that it slows down the transfer sure. is what it does. It, yeah. The transfer still works, but it slows it down. So in return, it doesn't work yeah, to do what it, yes, yeah. correct. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, like, like Christian Ponder out there <clears throat> throwing ducks, baby. Yeah. 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 You just go to wherever Walmart gets mineral oil and, and the reason reason to use mineral oils because some old man told me to use it but you know <laughs> you, you don't use water because water will make it rust mineral oil is oil so it's not going to make the internal stuff rust noted um noted. but it, it still has that weight so you just drill a hole 
I always do it in the head, the top of the bait. Oh, um, sure, sure. You drill a hole, and then you take a uh, syringe, get the mineral oil, and you shoot it in the hole of the, that you drilled and put a little piece of scotch tape, whatever, put it in your water. And also, make sure you have the hooks that you want to use on it and split rings. Put it in the water and, and add or take away until you get the whatever – weight that you want well ideally it's to it's to get a crankbait to dive deeper than it yeah, was designed not, to right? not o- not only that but cast it further too uh-huh. because if you uh-huh. think about it um the the mineral is the ultimate transfer uh-huh. Uh-huh. because it's liquid obviously yep. it's going to transfer <laughs> yeah 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 so you get the your, your desired weight whatever it is you pull out dry it off with the drag pull the tape off, dry it off, and, you know, I've already got my epoxy mixed up, and then you just, typically, like, when you drill a hole, you can't just epoxy over a big hole. Like, if I wanted to epoxy over this, you know, this here, it's going to it's gonna sink down. Yeah. So use something to fill the hole. I, I normally just use tooth, a few yep. toothpicks to yep. fill it and break them off. Oh. And then I'll epoxy over it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so the toothpicks fill in the hole, and then the epoxy sealing the hole. And yeah, I mean you can get you can get a DD twenty two that dives about fifteen sixteen feet out of the box. Uh, you, I can get it 20, 21, 22 feet, <laughs> even deeper than that. You know, yeah. sometimes. Well, there's like so there's a point where you put too much oil in and it messes with the action, right? Yeah, I mean as long as it doesn't sink and. and it, oh, so you can, don't want to make it sink when you put it in the water. No, you want to make it to where it, like, probably just basically a little suspends. less than neutral. Yeah. So, like, when you plop it, it stays down and kind of doesn't, doesn't yeah. flow. You don't want you it to don't sink, want it, but you don't want it to flow. Right. You more or less want it to suspend. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I, uh, I played with that on Tonka last, like, two years ago. I told myself, I'm going to, I'm going to spend some time and I'm going to, I'm going to try and crank deeper than ever anyone's cranked out there. And I remember uh, we had a, a bait, that Spro Fat Papa. Yep. Um, in that uh, lavender shad color. Yep. It was money out there. I um, mean, we won the tournament where a couple of our fish were caught on that. Yep. And I wanted to get it deeper, though. So I drilled through the bottom. You know, I'm a fucking rookie, right? Um, you and I you just cavity. used water and then JB Water Weld. And I remember... I threw it for like seven hours straight, and four hours in. This is this is the only reason I made it seven hours is because four hours in I caught a five pounder. That was the only bass I caught all fucking day on that thing. So see, in that year that I had that, really and I good, put it down. That year I had that really good summer out there. A lot of those fish were due to that. So I was doing it kind of like you were, where you're popping the hole in the head. Yeah, um, I was just filling it with water to get it to be buoyant. Yeah. But I just used toothpick. I didn't epoxy. You yeah. sandbagging son of a bitch. He doesn't even tell his friends. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> oh, I, I understand. I but understand. there was there's more to it than there's that. You gotta not gonna talk too far on Tonka because that's shut up. I, Let it out. You you still got money to take, right? Well, I don't <laughs> I like it. I like. I don't it. live up there anymore, so I mean, right. I could wreck someone's day. Yeah, I can't. The Lucas though, those are his. Those are his fish now. Lucas, who's that? Lucas Neal. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a good dude. Yeah. yeah, that kid's gonna be a stick out there, dude. Thanks for giving that up. That's a nugget, dude. Yeah, I mean it's it, you know it's uh it's it's not something that it's honestly it's not something I do a lot, but it, it in its place it's really really good. Mm-hmm. We all have that lake or that situation, right, yeah. where you want to do a certain thing but don't feel like you could do it, and yeah, that's it, a tool. Yeah, that, I mean I've got there's so many different little little tweaks and tricks like that that i do i mean um I, it's just you know you just tinker and i didn't learn that on my i didn't come up with that on my own but uh you know i did take it and apply it and i've applied it to other ways uh, or other baits and stuff and uh yeah i mean it's a it's a thought process i'm not saying it's going to be in a production spro bait that we're working on but it is something i'm thinking about trying on you know this bait that we're working on i don't know why they couldn't oh they, oh, they can bait, be. You know? i mean it's been done uh it seville did it oh you sure. know that makes they sense. had that 
flat shad, whatever their trap yeah. called bait was called. They had that. And then, well, they actually had several that silent baits. one, right? Yeah, yeah. And they, I mean, they had several baits like that. Um, huh. So, yeah, I, I don't like I said. It's just a thought process. You know, it's something I'm going to try in this bait. It may or may not come to market. Uh, the bait's going to come to market, but I don't know if it's going to be with this. Yeah, yeah. Technology. Um, I could definitely see a place for it, though. Oh, it, it, yeah. I mean, it's like I said, it's the ultimate transfer. Mm-hmm. It's just not for every bait. I right. never thought about it as a weight transfer deal. Like that. <clears throat> That's an interesting thought. You get got to get a little boost. Yeah, we, I got stuck with Brett Height and Jared Littner last night. I had too many beers. Yeah? That'll happen. Did y'all eat pretty good? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Um, so outside of fishing, you probably get sick of talking fishing all the time, eh? No. Not you. <laughs> so, honestly, the only thing is whenever I'm outside, truly outside of fishing, and somebody's like, oh, hey, this is my whoever. He's a professional fisherman. Like, I, I get it, you know, and I I shouldn't, I, I should, I guess I take it the wrong way, but I was like, God, I just want to be normal for a minute. Come on, yeah. you know. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I hear you there. No, I'm just a normal person. I put my pants on the same way you do. <laughs> you just I'm, <laughs> happen to do better at catching a green or a brown fish than. I mean, I, I have been. Not always, right. not every day. Yep. Every dog yeah. has his day, right? Yeah. yeah. But, like, it is weird how, you know, you're like, Katy Perry, right? Walking down the street, she's like, fuck. Katy Perry can't even walk down the street without me looking at her ass. I know that much, <laughs> right? Um, and that you're, like, at a fraction of that, and you feel that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I couldn't like, imagine be, actually being famous. I mean, people, I mean, you people are, but... say, I mean, but I'm not, you know? You are to me. Well, I'm right. not. Right. Okay. <laughs> I'm really not. <laughs> uh, you know, you're famous when everybody in the world knows who you are. I'm a fisherman. <laughs> That's a little different. <laughs> Anybody who bass fishes probably knows who you are. Oh, um, like, but you know, I mean, I, I definitely, I take a lot of. I, I don't want that to sound the wrong way, and it, it and it's nothing towards anybody that ever comes up to me at all. You know, that's. You know, I was that guy, you know, oh my gosh, here's, you know, Kevin Van Dam or, or whoever it was, yeah. you know, at the time, Ike Nelly. And, you know, that's cool, you know, and it, it's cool that anybody, let alone multiple people, think that of me. That's pretty cool. And, it, and it's something to that I take a lot of honor in, you know, uh, that anybody respects me. That's pretty neat. But at the same time, like people that you know I'm close to don't try to use me for your fame right yeah <clears throat> and, and if yeah. that's even what you want to call it cuz you know I don't call it fame by any means but I don't know how to put that into words but it is it does bug me I can see that I can yeah. see that yeah well you earned everything you got bro and and uh I can tell you're a catcher I'm just wondering how you efficiently keep that many rods on that on your deck because i put as many as i can up there but they are not organized and they're usually tangled by the end of the day so you know uh anything that i care about i put it all into it you know i put everything into it whether you know whether it's at work um whether it's at the house with something i care about i mean there's plenty of things at the house that i don't care about like (laughs) <laughs> whatever i mean my tackle is flawless my shop is flawless but you know the my closet's not you know yeah, um, i hate cleaning the bathroom oh yeah so I let that fucker rot <laughs> I, I think and it goes back so long i don't even know but i'm pretty sure i was like that before thrift and then I spent so much time in the boat with him that, you know, obviously I adapted some of it from him or adopted some of it from him. And, uh, yeah, it, it obviously it worked for him. It's worked for me. I mean, why you don't, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And it, it blows a lot of people. You know, there's a lot of very, very extremely talented anglers out there that they put two rods on the deck and they go out there and they, 
they whip your ass and take your money. But like that's not me. That you'll never see me with two rods. It doesn't matter. I I can know. You know, I'm gonna go throw a spro sashimi swimmer all day long at Lake Murray, and that's the only thing I'm gonna throw. But I'm gonna have probably six sashimi. As anglers, we develop special bonds with our equipment. There's something magical when you find that perfect jig rod and reel combo for a technique that elevates your confidence on the water. Whether it's a perfectly balanced, crisp, and sensitive jig rod that gives you the highest level of control over your bait, allows you to feel every grain of sand, every bite, and allows you to drive that hook clean, or a rod with the perfect action and taper that seems to keep your chatter bait, swim bait, or whatever it is in the back of the bass's head where it belongs no matter where you throw it, or a rod that allows you to effortlessly cast a lighter bait you used to cuss at on your old combo. These types of magical bonds are rare to find in a mass-produced sweatshop, which is why the Selka Fishing and Customs came to existence with the sole purpose of bringing you closer to your passion by enhancing the bond with you, your rod, and the bass. Confidence is everything in bass fishing, and there's no bigger boner buster than losing a big fish, not feeling like you can present your bait correctly. The list goes on and on. Mr. Veselka is a full-blown artesian craftsman who can build you the perfect rod, no matter the size or action, custom, exactly the way you want it he also has a wide variety to choose from right on his website including fan favorites like the eight foot hair jig rod the drop shot rod swim bait rod the chatter chicken rod the mh workhorse and more even ice fishing you do the whole frozen swiss cheese thing the ice fishing seen grumpy old men well, you can send that jiggle stick back to the antique store because Mr. Veselka builds custom ice rods in all sizes and actions too. So head on over to his website, veselkafishing.com. That's V-O-C-E-L-K-A fishing.com. To enhance your confidence on the water, feel your passion, and catch more bass, baby. It's been confirmed. Aliens from another planet have landed on Earth. Sources say there's been two confirmed landing points for these extraterrestrial beings. One being Japan, and also, unexpectedly, in Minnesota at Waypoint Angler Supply, a local tackle shop on Lake Minnetonka. With the ever-expanding universe, it's no surprise that there are other planets out there that also share our love for the sport of bass fishing. And to Earth's surprise, this latest visit came from extraterrestrial fishermen light years away and many innovations ahead when it comes to fishing equipment. Some hypothesize these beings came from the planet of Naboo, matching up with Mayan folklore dating back thousands of years with fishing equipment ahead of their time. It has been confirmed they left things never seen before by an Earth-born bass. Waypoint Angler Supply is the premier space station in the bass galaxy and has tackle that could previously only be found in Japan or the planet of Naboo. The Waypoint ship is full, but we don't know when the astronauts from Naboo will be back. So hurry in to Waypoint Angler Supply today and stock up on that Area 51 Planet of Naboo JDM good good before your buddy is whooping that sweet ass of yours. Stop into their store on Lake Minnetonka or visit their website waypointanglersupply.com. That's waypointanglersupply.com. Use the code GALAXY2024 to save 20%. On your next order at Waypoint. A couple, you know, <laughs> fluke style baits, you know, a, a couple minnows. Like, I'm going to have all these things because there is a chance that I'm in that situation for one cast for this other bait today. Now, I'm not, you know, if I'm at whatever, let's just say I'm at um, Oahe. Let's just say that so we don't say somewhere we're going this year and <laughs> talk about the lake. Yeah. But, uh, like if I'm a, I'm in Oahe, I'm not gonna have a 10XD on the deck, you know. Yeah. There's there's not a chance. Are you sure? I'm positive. <laughs> <Just kidding>. But <laughs> but you know I, I like I 
might have a little finesse jig you know my oh, big yeah. green fish bad little dude jig i bad mean little dude. actually that's every fish i weighed in the last day four at Oahe last year it was on a bad little well, dude yep and i hadn't thrown it all week i caught some on it on hartwell when i was down yeah. there yeah 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 it's uh it, it, it is it, 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 the funny story about that we were trying to come up with a name for it and john my buddy owns green fish was like hell i don't know but i don't know what to call it but it's a bad little dude and he, he snapped his finger and said, dude, that's it. That's it. I said, what? Bad little dude. I was like, yes. That's yes. perfect. Yeah. And he said, we call it the BLD. I said, yes, we can call it Brian's Long. And he said, no. Brian's <laughs> Little Dick. And he said, no, we'll call it Brian's Little. I was like, no, no, we got to name it something else. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's funny how, you know, things work out and come up with names and i like catchy names you know uh and with green fishing in particular you know, we kind of ran with that bad little theme you know we got the bad little dude jig we've got the bad little blade uh spinnerbait you guys got we a got, bad little bitch yet not you yet a, a bad little I bitch i think it's a bad little bitch I'm just like, oh yeah, yeah. I th- yeah with the bad little blade we, okay we, that's i knew I, I knew we have said that before like it's a I was bad like, where is that? that bad little, that's a bad <laughs> but uh blade. you know we got the the bad little shad head you know the jig head minnow deal um and yeah it's it's it's, it's turned out good but it's it all started just like dude i don't know what to name it but it's a bad little dude <laughs> yeah i like that yeah yeah dude so greenfish tackle like uh they, they got all kinds of stuff yeah yeah that's uh, a southern market it is yeah. it is but like you know we, we've got a lot of stuff a lot of specialty stuff and uh like in the market sometimes maybe it's too much stuff you know uh, you think a jig's a jig but a jig's not, not a jig no, you know no, there's yeah. there's ton, like for me i'm so picky about you know, them fucking yeah, yeah i mean so i've got i throw the gaff swim jig which I throw it on break. If I'm throwing a swim jig on break, it's a gaff. gaff. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, the regular swim jigs, light wire, fluorocarbon, it, you know, more of a finesse swim jig. Obviously, the bad little dude, uh, the all purpose jig, the um, the G, the new G cast jig. I throw it a lot. It's kind of a, it's more of a casting jig. But then the crawl ball got the crawl ball rubber i mean all of these like you're at 10 10 different jigs yeah that quick yep you, you Each know has a, a purpose yeah a jig's not a jig i agree yeah i agree i'm as picky as it gets like jigs and tubes like that's my deal see the tube something i don't know a lot about i mean mm. that i know a little bit about it i think i've got some some sneaky tubes um pretty sh- i know i've got one sneaky tube uh that you can't get and uh yeah it's just something you know i'm from down south and it's like it's outdated you know it, it i tried to for the, the for the small <laughs> well i'm saying even up north i know you guys catch plenty of fish on it but it's outdated it. it's you know there's so many other things it's like i feel like and I, I'm not sitting here telling you guys how to catch a smallmouth. Oh, we're listening. But <laughs> it's like, dude, a, a Ned, you know, uh, there's so many things that catch the same fish that I feel like you have a better landing ratio. I agree with him. Tubes don't work. Don't yeah, throw no, them. They suck. <laughs> them Pick up something uh, else. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You heard it here first. We're not pros. He is. No. Nah, yeah. That's a label. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, I. You know, I, I two, three smallmouth tournaments a year. That's what I know about smallmouth. So I don't they're, know a lot. They're fun, aren't they? They are fun. Is that God, like something them. that was like a? I feel like that's something that's like a treat for southern. Yeah, boys. yeah like absolutely. We get to catch more than absolutely. five bass yeah. a day. Like, yeah. like see, used to you know, largemouth won at Champlain yeah. pretty much most of the time. Largemouth won, uh-huh. but you know, you from down south, you didn't care about largemouth. You want to go catch smallmouth, and you would always get your ass handed to you. And what well, nowadays, you know, well, uh, the largemouth don't win anymore. Mm-hmm. Mostly, most of the time, they can, but I, and honestly, I don't know if they can anymore at this point with what we've got going on now. With what I saw last year, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. would have said that they could win any tournament out there till I saw what I saw last year. Yeah, yeah, I and, think the world's eyes got opened up. To that yeah, deal. it killed most tackle sales after that tournament. Oh, yeah. yeah, like. Yeah. 
it's uh yeah there's not a lot of options when you're doing that no no how um so that deal like men are in biwa style yeah how long you been doing that three or four years yeah yeah i mean i was doing it before it was out you know uh, I figured. Definitely not the first by any means. Obviously, you know, it's, they've been doing it in Japan for a long, long time. Um, but, yeah, been doing it for a while, and I was like, whoa, what happened? Everybody knows about it now. And I mean, like overnight. Yeah. Well, everybody Chrissy in the world. Chrissy class got on it. Gussie yeah. won a cl- another yeah. class. Two yeah, classes but, got one on it. But, yeah, but so Gussie wasn't. Like, that's the me can. That, Gussie. That's two different things. People, I would agree. He wasn't shaking shit. No, that he was wasn't a tight shaking line. No. Demiki, yeah. can, that's Canadian style B one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, or Demiki, we I call it Demiki because that's what I learned it as. But you know, I think they call it moping up north, mm-hmm. or uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I've heard a lot of words. Moping. But, um, you know, and you hear people oh, I call, nowadays. I, oh, I call them on the Demiki or just Demiki, and I was like, dude, you didn't catch them Demiki. Call them shaking a minute. Like if you're casting it, you're not Dominican. That's not a Dominican rig. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's two. Yeah, it's the same head. It's the same bait. It's the same line. It's the same rod. But it's two totally different techniques. Absolutely. There's something to it, man. Um, weight, jig head shape, line yeah. tie angle. Yeah. There, there's a lot to. It. There I mean, is a lot to hey, it. Uh, another bait. I mean, such a simple technique. I've got such a large selection uh of baits and heads and uh you know um actually pretty cool we got a head with spro that we're fixing i i shouldn't say fixing the release because we're still working on it it's not right but it's going to be nasty when we get it right it's going to be really really good cool and um yeah i'm pretty excited about it and baits baits for you know the shake as well line tie this way or this way no, it's, it's like this. I, I, I've, I've tried that, like the depths mitts head. I like that. Uh, hey, I've got them. I like it. I like it. But hook rolls. I, I, yeah, it <laughs> does. Um, but all the time I do it, it doesn't seem to make it rock any better. Really? Mm. It seems to depend on the head, like versus a vertical, and it seems to matter. Yeah. But on a normal minnow, you're probably right. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's a lot of different. There's, you know, and I, I've got some friends that are working on heads, you know, with other companies as well. And I was like, man, I wish I'd had that idea. And I know what it is. I'm not going to tell it, but it's like, man, I want to put it in my head, but, but I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, mm-hmm. it's not my idea. It's their deal. And you're going to see, I mean, this, this deals evolving, you know, you're going to see a lot of cool stuff come out over the next few years. And we already have, you know, we've already seen some cool stuff coming, uh, we're going to see more this year. We're going to see it next year. But, you know, we're going to branch out. You know, I, I've got one really, really cool bait that we're working on. And, man, like I've, I I live a mile from the boat ramp at Murray. So I drive down to the dock to test stuff and four or five, six times a day. And, um, you know, this one bait in particular that, that I designed for scoping. I mean, it's other stuff as well, but it's designed towards scoping. And it's so good, but I'm like, man, I think we can make it better. And I can't decide whether to tell them to pull the trigger and go ahead and put it in production. Like, it's so good as it is, but I just feel like we can make it better. So it's like, I don't know what to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like the way you think, though, man. Yeah. I like the way you think. You yeah. care about how that bait's going to react. A lot of guys, they just end up with their name on something, and that bait could be absolute junk. And yeah, they don't give no, a shit because the check cleared. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, I've we've we've seen swim baits like that recently, <laughs> and uh, boy, they were drunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, hey, we, they, are we allowed to name swim baits uh, or no? I, I, I'm not gonna call anybody out, but I think if you're uh, you 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 can read into that pretty quick. Uh, yeah. I wasted I wasted uh, whatever the price was times seven on it and uh yeah are we uh, using our fourth fifth or sixth sense with this conversation um <laughs> <laughs> uno dos tres cuatro cinco oh. seis got it yeah as but hey you know everybody it. everybody <laughs> we all make mistakes but 
Oh, that I make a lot of them. They just never get one. to production. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm definitely not. You'll never see me put something like that on the market. I know, dude. That's why you're a bad little dude. Um, and you ain't that little. Sorry. I didn't mean it. Well, my wife says. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how this deal's working here. Is it just hovering? Dude, it's floating. Oh, yeah. yeah, dude. It's floating. Isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah. That's anti-gravitational that's, shit. That's, that's some... hardcore there. Yeah, dude. We stopped at Area 51 before we got here. I see that. Yeah. I had to give up my left testicle to, just to have this technology. Yeah. Well, you only need one. It's floating there, dude. That's a hover rig, if I've ever seen <laughs> that's one. That's the hover rig. <laughs> hover right rig. Right there. Hover rig. Okay, so you're on the road a lot. Like, how do you, how do you keep your head straight on the road? How do you get through them long drives all the time? Are you like podcast guy? Are you like jamming to Spice Girls? Are you <laughs> like having an audiobook read to you by or Morgan Freeman? Like, what are you doing on the road? So, like, dude, honestly, driving is my thing. It does get old, but. Uh, so many times, whatever it is, is in the off season, sponsor negotiation t- stuff. Like I get in my truck and I drive, I might just drive down the road and back and forth, whatever. But I, I don't know what, I don't know how to tell you what it does. It's just my, I'm away. It's, Therapy. It's, it's almost like a release. So, but like on the road, you know, I'll drive for a little while and I jam, I jam and I call and talk to friends. Mm-hmm, you know, that's mm-hmm, what I do. Yeah, you mm-hmm. know, like. I won't answer the call for a little bit, and I'm j- like I'm jamming. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, and then uh, you know, I what are you, I, what are you jamming to? Dude, I'm all over the place. Like yeah, you I know, like I'm from you know, ZZ Top to um, oh my God, whatever. Twain like some huh? A little Shania Twain in there. Yeah, yeah. Man, I feel like a woman. <laughs> mm, mm, any man of mine, dude. Yeah. Mm. So you know. Uh, my dad used to tell me growing up that she was almost my mom. What? See, my, yes. dad, my dad said that, too. Yeah, what? see? Yeah. <laughs> my, dad, my dad didn't almost bang Shania Twain. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't so, think my did either, no. but she was always my mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, no, yeah, I'm all over the place on music. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you have to uh, be. I mean, you spend as much time in the truck as you guys do. and Yeah. I mean, when Shania says pull out, you, you listen. I do you know. listen? <laughs> I'm dude. I, I'm listening to whatever that woman says. Just tell me what to do. Teach me something. Oh, yeah, she's beautiful. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I like your range though, dude. I'm a big, you know, from 19. I mean, shit, 48 Conway Twitty oh, all the way to last fucking time I was today, over, baby. Yeah. Last time I was over, we had the records going. And oh yeah, yeah. Throwing out some old school. How how do you not jam the tight fit jeans? You, you just do. You just do. You Absolutely. just do. You just do. Yeah. yeah. I'm a big Tom Petty guy. Oh, oh yeah. Petty's like, oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. It's my spirit yeah. animal, maybe, yeah. in the music world. But that's cool, man. I, like I tell taste. you, it's kind I of like funny, like, listen to my dad and my mom. You More my, so my dad than anything growing up. It's like, that's what he, you know, that's the kind of music you listen to. Like, uh, I don't know what you call it, old rock. Classic, classic, classic. See, yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It like you know, it, it, I didn't hate it, but it wasn't the cool thing, you know. Yeah. But now that you're older, I don't know if it kind of like takes me back to being a kid, listening to it with my dad. Yeah. But I truly love that music now. They call it nostalgia, I think. Yeah. And there's definitely an aspect to that. Like, there's something about cheesy '90s like chick singers that that reminds me of like going to the grocery store with my mom. So like, yeah. I have this weird like. You know, yeah, like, yeah, like there's shit like that, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then classic rock with my dad, you yep. know, yeah. So it is funny how you hear an old song and it just immediately, instantly brings you it back. It brings some something you relate yeah. to that song, yeah. and you like, I couldn't sit here and tell you any, not one single one, but then when it comes on, it's, it's like, oh, takes you back to some random nothing. 27 years right. ago yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah yeah it's music, <laughs> music is kind of like a time machine that way like well memories like if, if somebody asks you to on the spot right like what's your favorite non-pornographic magazine to masturbate you're like, 
Well, I, uh, good I, I don't know, right? Yeah, but but is this an episode of Step Brothers? Or <laughs> did we just become best friends? <laughs> yep. You will fix the fucking drywall now. <laughs> I've drawn a blank. What's I'm done? So, is, I'm so good at one liners. What's I'm done so, is done, Dad. Are you can invest or not? Yeah. <laughs> Keep your liver spotted hands off my mother. She's a saint. <laughs> this house is a fucking prison. On planet bullshit. Uh, anyway. Okay, so you're jamming. You, you like singing? Yeah, you shower I'm, singer or truck singer? Trucks. I'm a truck yeah. singer. Yeah, but I'm singing it's just a core news with me. <laughs> but what's funny is, what's, what's funny is you got it blared and you're singing and like truly no, like dude, I can sing. Yeah, I got and then like, shit. It gets turned down. And you're like, "What the hell? <laughs> this is so bad." It's like, I don't know if it. I don't know, but to me, it's like, man, I can sing. When it you blend our voices good. together, it sounds great. Right? Yeah. 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 And then yeah. you turn it down. And it's like, oh my god, I'm bad. Killed that dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> killed that yeah. dog. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like my old man always said growing up, it sounds like a dog shitting razor blades. Oh, yeah. Down. I don't know what that's like. It sounds painful. Yeah, it definitely doesn't yeah. sound good. No. Yeah. That's probably what like got him and Shania broke up. Very well could have been. Probably. Very well could have been. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. What happened to her? Why didn't she make... Did she like lose her voice? What, what the fuck happened to her? All of a sudden, uh, she just stopped. I don't know. She just did. She was just in Minnesota two years ago. Did a concert? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. She hopped on a song with uh, that gay cowboy singer, Orville Peck. Which one? They're all. <laughs> Orville Peck, the masked one. Legends Never Die. It's a good song. It's got Shania featuring Shania. But yeah, cool story. Yeah, great story. Anyway, bass fishing. Um, what's, the best, what's the biggest misconception about being a professional bass angler? Uh, living the dream, probably. Misconception? Probably, yeah, and don't get me wrong, yeah, um, it is a dream. I'm very fortunate to do it. I'm very fortunate to make a living and provide for my family through that, but not everybody out here is making a living. Yeah. Um, and, and I am right now, but that don't mean I will next year. That don't mean I will the rest of this year. You yeah. know, it's uh, it doesn't matter. You can be on the top and gone next year. I mean, literally, you think about it. To requalify for the elites, it goes on a – be honest with you, I don't know exactly how it is because the way I look at it, if I'm bad enough to get cut off, to get, to get kicked out, I don't need to be there anyways. I'm I'm probably not doing good enough to be making very much money. Um, so I just don't worry about it. But you can literally win every tournament this year mm -hmm. and in two years get kicked out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that, mm -hmm. gone. Doesn't matter. Um, Seems like if so you win a classic or AOI, that kind of helps buy yeah, you some more time, right? Yeah, but I mean, it only buys you three more years or two more years. Yeah, I you gotcha. know, really. Hmm. And actually, you know, I think if you come in on an exemption, it only buys you one year, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So if you qualify, you're guaranteed two years. Mm. If you come in on a Legends exemption, you're just guaranteed that year. Yeah. I, I'm 99% sure of that. I think Jordan Lee might stick around, though. Yeah, he probably will. He's a good yeah. angler, that one. Yeah. 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 He's, still got a, he's still got another uh, Legends exemption on top of that. You know, so, yeah, yeah. so he's guaranteed two years, but yeah. he's going to he's going to be here a few more than those. Are you thirsty, dude? Can I get you something? <clears throat> I'm, I'm good. I'm right, good. I got yeah. water in the fridge yeah. if you need one. All right. So. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right on, man. Um but you know, to go into that a little bit more, I mean, it it is a dream. Uh, I am fortunate to do that. But you know, from you when you're in the outside looking in, and you've you've never lived that, you don't really know what it is. For sure. And there's a lot more work to it. There's a lot more headache, heartache, disappointment, uh, hard times. There's a lot more to that than you realize. I mean, it's dude, it's a job. You know, mm -hmm. you love your job, but you still have bad days, yeah. you know, from time to time. You still uh, don't get along with all your, you know, uh, co-workers all the time. Uh, there's still things that go wrong. And it's the same with this. But, dude, we pay $70,000 to go to work yeah. and hope we get a paycheck. Think about that. It's I mean, a crazy it's crazy. Like, that's <laughs> like, 
Literally. It's a weird it's, concept, dude. It's 45000 in entry fees. By the time your expenses, and that's actually probably being kind of kind of lenient yeah. on what you spend, $70,000 a year to go to work and hope you get a paycheck. Yeah, there's no other sport like it. Yeah. It's, it's the only you know. sport I'm aware of, besides maybe poker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, there's more to it than that. Like, there are sponsors, but not everybody in the world has sponsors. Not everybody in the world has good sponsors. Not everybody in the world even gets half of their stuff paid for. Right. Um, But, you know, and that's another aspect. That's another part of, you know, it's we really have, like, a bunch of jobs in one. Yeah. You know, we have fishing. We have research for specific tournaments. We have, you know, me, not everybody, but me. I have research and development with, you know, lures. See, that's uh, a fun part. Though. Yeah, and yeah. that's one of my favorite parts. But And then you have the marketing. Marketing. You know, not yeah. only marketing your sponsor's products, but marketing yourself. Right, right. You know, not only marketing yourself to sponsors or potential sponsors, marketing yourself to your target yeah yeah and what's crazy to me is some of the best fishermen i know couldn't talk to a two by four like yeah you know if we're Mm -hmm. talking about you know if it's the nhl right and we're talking hockey and we're talking the best pro athletes in the world they don't even need to they don't they don't they don't need to speak a word no right no they're on ice play says it all that like their rod so to speak or their stick and their skates does all the talking and that is what they get paid on they get paid for their skates and their stick you know what i mean right bass fishing i think about how many good anglers out there that can't talk to a camera so they don't make it you know what i mean a lot of them Mm -hmm. so hats off to to you because i think you're a cool unique personality i think you have a lot to offer and i think there's not a lot of people as obsessed with it even pros as you and that to me is is I look up to that because I feel like I'm almost as obsessed as you, dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the fishing, the the winning is it's a drug. The and I love it. The fishing is a drug, and I love it. But man, my like, like I said, my thing is tackle. Like, hmm. but and and I that leads to the fishing, obviously. But I think. I think the reason I like tackling, like tinkering with tackling and modifying and, and this and then designing all of that, it leads to better results in the fishing, <laughs> which lead to better results in the tournaments. Right. You know, right. so so it's like, it's kind of like the tackle is the core. You know, that's where it all starts. And, and, and rigging for a tournament, preparing for a tournament is probably my second favorite thing. <laughs> really? You know, a lot of people despise it, you know. I just hate tying them leaders. Yeah, yeah but I, I've watched you sit up till two, three the night before. Oh, I will make sure everything is perfect. Two I'm OCD. Yeah, yeah, when it comes to that. So, like, you know, whenever I get home from here and and do the stuff that I've got to do, whenever I start preparing for, you know, the two Florida tournaments, uh, Harris Chain and St. John, like, it'll take me a full week preparing for that. You know, and, and three or four days of that is going to be – well, for for that, it's probably two days of nothing but rigging rods. Yeah, yeah. And and but everything's a hundred percent flawed. Yeah, and I'm not talking. How like, many rods are we talking? A 50? lot. So whenever I left to go to Texas for the first, you know, two elites. Well, I had two elites and an open. Yeah. Back to back to back, and a lot of miles in between. But it was like seventy nine rods that I rigged. But, and I, I no, understand that is that is a I gasp understand of respect. that's well, that's excessive and it is I I know it is am I going to use all of those no but it goes back to you know I've got four of these two of them and two of them and two of them and three of them because they might be a situation for it if yeah. there's a chance that I'm going to use something in those next two events you know I I've been to Florida enough I know what goes down there I know the things that are gonna have a chance you know i'm not gonna be taking you know uh spro dd little john down you know <laughs> yeah you know, i'm not gonna need that i'm not gonna have that rig yeah but uh the stuff that there's a chance i'll have you know like chatterbait you know i used to have a chatterbait title well now i've got like six 
There's a lot you know, to a different, chatterbait. Different weights, different uh, Light color, different colors. Trailer. Yeah. Yep. See, I think I own six. Oh. See, that chatterbait deal is such like so. There's guys that they can catch them on a chatterbait every time of year, yep. any lake they go to. And for me, it, it's not quite that way. For me, it's it's like I can catch them a certain two times a year. Three, four different ways I can make that work and have a lot of confidence in it. But there's guys who are throwing them and catching them on it in places. Supreme Lurico introduces a revolution in bass fishing with our triumphant trio. The Supreme Slug, Lil Slug, and Slaw. Leading the charge is the Supreme Slug. A legend revived after two decades, its unique shape and built-in hook slot redefine tactical brilliance on the water giving you an edge like never before. But the saga continues with the Lil Slug, a miniature powerhouse that mirrors the majesty of the Supreme Slug. Don't let its size fool you. It packs the punch needed to lure in those elusive bass. And for the ultimate bass feast, there's the Slaw, a craw representation with the same irresistible characteristics as the Supreme Slug. It's bass seduction at its finest, designed to trigger predatory instincts. Exclusively crafted for bass enthusiasts, Supreme Lurico brings you a trio that's not just baits, they're bass magnets. Supreme Lurico, cast in gold, reel in glory. Most tournament anglers and guides are not covered fully or properly. Most insurance policies don't cover exposure due to tournaments and guiding. Taking the chance of using the wrong insurance gives the insurance company an out when settling a claim. How will the insurance company know that your fishing tournaments are guiding? Well, social media is their number one resource. And guess what? They use it. Lake Country Insurance offers one of the only products that can cover both tournament and guiding use in your vessel. Anglers don't seem to hesitate spending fifty to $100,000 for a boat. Why risk that large asset? All because you wanted to save a few extra shekels. Are you nuts? Call the folks at Lake Country Insurance today and make sure you have the proper coverage for your boat before the unexpected happens. Call 612-285-3113. Today, or visit their website, lcisagency.com. That's lcisagency.com. Is that I have zero confidence doing it. Like, what's something you've learned about that? Oh, man, I've been throwing a chatterbait since before anybody knew about it. Well, I know I mean, Mr. Thrift was like, yeah, like pretty good uh, with that. Yeah. Dude, that one ounce one or whatever. If there was one bait, you know, I, I think you could, if you could only have one bait, any time, anywhere. That'd be it. It probably would over I mean, a jig. Probably, huh? Yeah, I mean, probably so because it's you could, you can use a half ounce chatter bait for so many different things. Yeah. I mean, you think think about this. I'm about to blow your mind. Think about the top ten over the last four or five years. The last two is like nine out of the top ten was a jig head minnow and maybe a jerk bait. But the other one, what was it? Anywhere you go. Wagon. Chatter wagon. Yeah, I, I'm serious. Yeah. No, yeah. I've noticed. There's a top there, there's a chatter bait. One chatter bait in the top ten almost every single time. Every tournament. tournament. Yeah. And uh, not only large mouth tournaments too. Right. Even small mouth. Yeah, I cannot figure out that small mouth chatter bait deal. Father yeah. Gill is telling me a little bit. Forrest has it figured out. That's why. I, that's, that's your thing. You go catch them. I'm man, that man. We do that blade bait thing, and when it gets yeah. cold, and that's stupid fun. And I've tried to make a chatter bait work that way, and I just cannot See, jig I, a chatter. To me, it's a, like before the blade bait deal goes, you could probably jig a chatter bait like a blade bait and make it make it work. But it seems like you got to move it too far when they don't want it moving that far. I got more questions than answers. Yeah. Yeah, myself as well. Yeah. <laughs> life's a lot life, life's a lot yeah. that way. Um, okay. Well let's let's so 
blade color on a chip. I don't want to get too in the weeds, but I know this is like the guy to do it with. Like blade color on a chatterbait. It matters. It, it, it does. matters. And, and dude, I've literally got one, two, three, four. I've got six 3,700 size boxes completely full. And then I've got five, four of the big Spro waterproof bags completely full. Like, I've, I've probably got more chatterbaits than Brett Height. I think you do after that. I haven't so, asked him, but and, and I've got I've got a lot of JDM stuff too that you can't buy. The JDM chatters? Do you play not, with those? Yeah, and and not just the not just the evergreen ones either. Because the jackhammer to me is the is the king. It is. It is. Is there what, is there other chatterbaits you found that outfish that at certain times? Um. So there's one, and. Uh, I don't really know a ton about it, but I have caught fish on it. But uh, there's one that's called the grass piece. Um, Bass puzzle. Yeah, grass piece. I, I got two of them. Yeah, yeah, I've got a lot more than that. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually met the guy that um, you know he practiced. He fished the open at Okeechobee as a co angler. And, Mr. Um, puzzle. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. It is funny. Uh, I'll say it in a second. But he practiced with Kenta. And Kenta and Masa camped out in my yard at, at you know, mm-hmm. our house in, in uh, Florida, at Okeechobee. And it was funny, you know, I, I, I don't speak Japanese, Me. but um, Kenta introduced us, and Kenta knew I liked the grass piece and this and that. And he, he brought me some in and said, hey, you know how they do it. I was like, Oh, thank you, thank you. Is how what? do they do that? Like, I don't know like, how they do. I've never been presented a JDM bait from a, like <laughs> from the source, you know. But they do like a bow, like you got knife. It's like he handed it in kind of like a bow, and it's like, oh, thank you, thank you. You know, I, I want to be as respectful. You know, I know, totally, I know our dude. cultures are completely different, but you know, it's like I'm honored. I, I truly am honored that one, you're giving me something that I don't have to buy. Two, you're giving me something that. I can't buy because these were these were actually prototypes. They wasn't the ones that you can buy when you get a chance. Um, but uh, I said, "What's your name?" And he was like, "Uh, uh." And he knew what I asked. And Kenta didn't even know how to tell me his name. I said, "I, said, I call you Grass Piece." He said, "Okay, <laughs> okay." <laughs> and I think it's funny because even right there, I, I noticed I was trying, kind of talking in like a Japanese. Oh yes, yes. Like accent, you know. Yeah, yeah. Sanky, I don't sanky. know. I, I don't. That's just. I think it's weird it's just, that we do that. I do it. it I know happens, a lot of people yeah. do it. You well, know, not everybody, we, but we have a natural tendency to imitate. Yeah. Like, even as kids, yeah. right? That's yeah. a natural. Like it's in our DNA. Something about like uh, you know caveman instincts. You yes. Yeah. Whatever freaking yeah. little pea brain we have in yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it's cool. But that that's a cool bait. You know, I, I've caught a lot of fish on it. It's a lot more subtle than a chatter bait. Uh, you know, I think one fault that it has, just, I mean, everything has its faults, but one fault that it has, it doesn't skip like a chatterbait. You that know? makes sense. You know, and that's not something that the you always skip. need. It, with a you, horny toad on it. Right. But so that's you, why. Yeah, you know, yeah, you can't yeah, skip yeah, yeah. a buzzbait with a, with a uh, you know, a, a skirt. Right, right, right. I'll blow your mind. Where do you think, who do you think the first person to ever throw a buzz toad was? Put a horny toad on a buzzbait. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I would, I, if you want me to take a stab at it, I will. Todd Alton. I wouldn't have guessed that. Nope. He is the I OG. I respect for that man. He's the OG buzz toter. Really? Yep. I don't, has that and ever I'm been talk- on the record? Yeah. I okay. mean, I, I've said it, you know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, plenty of places. Good. Well, um, Minnesota boys know now. Yeah. He is the OG buzz toter. <laughs> uh, and I'm talking way, I like, I was early high school probably middle school no probably shit. middle school and i graduated high school in 08 dude way back he's been doing that shit since like yeah. the 90s yeah uh no nah, well the early 2000s late i'm not 2000s. sure i don't know what year the horny toad came out um but it was real soon after yeah yeah that's See, crazy. i think that's one bait that i don't throw on a buzz bait I put a lot of other things on the buzz bait. And well, I'm, I mean, it's still the same thing. Right. It's the same it concept. The same, yep. You see, people think a lot of different things, 
But to me, the reason you put a toad on a buzz bait is one, you can skip it. Mm-hmm. Two, you can throw it seven times farther. And three, you hook them a lot better because when that's when that buzz bait with the skirt's coming by and the fish comes up and you just got this skirt, they when they suck, there's nothing to suck. That right? is a yeah. That's a nugget. When when you have a body, a plastic body, uh, any kind of body, and that suck, it has something to actually suck. To. Right. Yep. I think I was watching a seminar on you and why you threw a spinnerbait trailer. Maybe. No. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> but you know, like yeah. people don't believe in a spinnerbait trailer, but to me, the spinnerbait trailer is just for that. What he said yeah, is the I'm, ability for yeah. them to be. This far away, yeah, it gives them something. To it, suck, it does. It does. You know? Yeah, um, they don't suck on a ball sack, dude. I mean, they, you never know now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess I don't swim. You really don't know. know. Yeah, yeah, but no, I mean that's. You know, people say it's the action. Yeah, maybe it is, but like that's my theory, and, and it doesn't really matter. You know, I, it gets hung up me. And Thrift and Luke Clawson had a conversation years ago, a long time ago. It was like, I don't even remember what we were talking about, but it was like, I want to know why. It was like, it doesn't matter why. It just works. And, and, and they're right. They are right. I do think if you do understand the why, it can help you make make whatever it is better, mm-hmm. dig, get better at it, be able to apply it in more places, uh, be able to – identify it quicker but at the end of the day it don't matter it just has to work it just ha- I, i'm a why guy i like to know why i like works. to i yeah. do but yeah. you know sometimes if you don't know you just gotta understand it don't matter <laughs> right they just want it yeah. Yeah. yeah well probably the best buzz bait fisherman i know is andy walls i mean like i'm not that but that dude with the buzz bait is magical and he is about as He's like a person who is a wine snob, like them wine yeah. snobs. He's that for buzz baits. And he has never told me that any buzz bait is any good besides the one he likes, which I won't mention, until you mentioned you working with Norris. Yeah. He mentioned he really likes the looks of that new buzz bait with the weird wings. Yeah, so that it is cool. Kind of gay? It is cool. <laughs> I mean. Sorry, Andy. <laughs> Yes and no. I mean, okay. it's going to work. It's uh, definitely going to work, but then I, there's three buzz baits that I throw. And, like, the the Greenfish Toad Toter buzz bait, the Brandon Cobb Toad Toter buzz bait, it's as close to the actual true Todd Alton OG buzz bait. You know, he didn't make it. He, a friend of his did, and it's just what he did. That's the closest thing you can get to that. Hmm. It's the hook and it's the wire. And that's the two main things. Sure. Um and they're right on that. I throw that. I throw um, the little, the shark, which is there's a big and a little shark. It's just a small double buzz. buzz. And then I throw the eight ounce hammerhead, okay. and it's uh, it's a small head banger. And that's the three buzz baits I throw. They work. They're not broke. There's no reason to fix it. That makes sense. And I guess the only thing I've noticed, like when I go south versus where we're from is like where we're from up north it seems like you want that bait to move slower yeah and it seems like when you get down south you need to move it faster and sometimes you can't even move that bait fast enough like um it seems like burning baits seems to be more popular down south so is a lot of times yeah you know is there are you saying that is there a buzz bait that you feel that you need you can work slower than others and that's why you choose that one because that's i mean that's the Andy Walls Minnesota like philosophy is, is you want to be able to move it as as slow as you can. Mm-hmm. So there are, and I do have other buzz baits, but it's been so long since I've thrown them. But they do, yeah, they're better for that slow deal. Like one's a plastic blade, really. Yeah, and uh, it's it's kind of a weird. It's a niche deal. It's a very very niche deal, but uh, it does. Honestly, I don't know where the place is. Yeah. But, like, I would think super cold, you know, real, not cold super water. cold, but the cold water, like, yeah. 
before it all takes off that's when it would really shine yeah um but man you can wind it so slow but on what's the, the other hand one? Well, who makes that or what's it's that just called? homemade oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you can't get it no, no, right. no yeah, i mean it's seriously it's homemade yeah, that's um <laughs> But, uh, you know, also the trailer, you know, you can put something that has more drag on, on, you know, on the back. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Yeah. What's the dumbest lure that you have confidence in that, like, people would throw? And because you're a tackle guy, you've, you've seen, touched, felt, and thrown probably more tackle than anybody on the Elite Series. I'm going to maybe go out, out on a limb with that, but... I feel like you've seen it all when it comes to that. And what I think of is when I went musky fishing with a guy, and he told me the best musky lure ever is a swick. And I saw it in the water, and it's literally a log that goes. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. It's like a jerk bait with zero side to side action. It's hmm. the best musky lure ever invented. And he fucked him up on it. I wow. couldn't believe it, right? That's what made me think of that. I don't know. I'm trying to trying to put my finger on it. Um, gosh, I, there's so many. It's hard. When poop? you ask. You throw that poop? Yeah, yeah. You like it? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Which poop do you like? Uh, so the depth's poop is good. Okay. Uh, cover you know, scat? It, yep. The cover scat's good. The uh, the um, crawl nugget, the Spro crawl nugget, Shin Fu Kai designed it. I really like it. It's it's really all. It's very similar profile, but the backside, which I would call the, I don't know what you would call it, the the side that your hook goes into, your line tie side. Mm-hmm. It's got two little, like it looks like a crawl, the the tail of a crawfish. Sure. But one, you know, it looks really good. Yep. It, but two, it's it's their fins more or less, so it makes it glide really good. So glide further, yeah. have more, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, more horizontal movement. That makes sense. And yeah, it's the same consistency, you know, salt consistency. It mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's really heavy. You know, it it does what that style of bait is for, and uh, it's a really cool deal. You know, you can skip it seventy three miles. Yeah, and uh, it's cool. When have you found that to be a factor, right? Because it's it's tough because you got a hundred baits to throw, and you know when are you throwing the poop with a couple of legs on it? Like yeah. when you is it is it like fuck? I give up. I'm gonna throw this piece of shit at them and see if they eat it. Like, so, like there's several different situations I've called them. Um, probably the situation I've called them the best though is like that that barely pre spawn um like there's a couple on the bed but most of them you know mostly everybody's still thinking it's too cold yeah and uh you know just throwing it around docks it makes sense or or skipping it you know it skips like i can skip a jig a really long way i can skip a turd a lot farther yeah Yeah. it's it's an it's insane how far you can skip it Hmm. it's such a hard technique i think too i have yet to even touch it I, I I had it work one stupid time and I yep I got you never play out. with the poop no no just you my, just flush it just my kids <laughs> yeah just, yeah just the diapers yeah 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 I've got a lot of those here lately oh yeah, yeah. playing with well how old playing. how old seven months actually uh, okay well, yeah eight months next week I'll let you guys do some family bonding um, got my vasectomy <laughs> last week <laughs> yeah whoa. <laughs> Oh, Timbo, I got uh, vegan. You going to create more uh, more tackle, more poop baits? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, number one. You uh, can't catch any on what I'm about to do. Uh, oh, there'll be a way. <laughs> Just wait. A sure couple more catch. years from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> no, talk about your kids. I'll be right back. Uh, so how old? Uh, fixing to be eight months. Oh, okay. It'll be eight months next week. It's got to uh, be a got to be a nightmare doing uh, this yeah man it really sucks you know facetime's the best thing ever yeah um yeah i got 11 year old daughter and uh she gives me a lot of gray hair mm-hmm. um i die you know not really but um uh, yeah uh it does suck being away from my family um and, you know, most of the time they come to most of the tournaments yep. i don't think my wife's missed uh 
the only I'm pretty sure the only tournament she's missed since I qualified for the or started fishing the elites um was St. Clair last year. The only reason she missed is, you know, she said, she said, I'm not having no Yankee baby. <laughs> That's what she said. I swear to God. Uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah. So I fished St. Clair and every day I, when I get to 20 pounds, I'd call her. It's like, do I need to get on a plane? So fish day three, weighed in, drove from whatever state that is. What is it? Michigan? Michigan. Yeah. I think yeah. to South Carolina straight one shot fished all day drove to my driveway um got a little bit of rest and uh i think i actually helped break the water okay. and <laughs> um and uh got to time i don't know a yeah, couple yeah. hours nap um got up did a few things around the house and she said i think it's time to go and we went to the hospital and not much longer we had a baby so yeah. i think that's the only elite she's missed um you know, obviously with school and stuff, my daughter misses some. And, uh, but they, you know, they all three came to Fork and, uh, Toledo. And so, yeah, it's cool, but it does suck being away. Right. Like this week. Yeah. You know, at ICAST March 2024. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a tackle connoisseur, I guess. You know, do you get like that in depth with condoms? <laughs> What's that? Like, I don't think any angler is sponsored <laughs> by a it. condom company, right? Like, I feel like there's an opportunity there. I feel like you got to do some talking, maybe. At the end of the day, like, nothing, I mean, unless you're as good as Brian knew, there's nothing that's more, like, detrimental to a fishing career than kids. But, I'm going out on a limb with so, that because that's his greatest blessing. So I don't mean to. So I'll, I'll say this. Um, I didn't realize it in, until a year or so ago, but like used to fishing was the most important thing in my life. And it was easier when it was, I had nobody to worry about, but myself, you know, that's yeah. all I had to focus on was fishing. Now that I have a family, it's a lot tougher, but my family obviously means a lot more than fishing. Yeah. So that being said, it's, what matters? What do you want out of life? Do you want to be the best fisherman you can possibly be? Or do you want to be, do you want, what do you want? You know, right. do, is that what you want? Or do you want a family and then, you know, be good enough to support get by, it? Yeah. Get by. So to me, my family means more. That means more. I want, I still want to win every tournament, but I, I'm, there's, I can't be, I can be the best me with the life I have now, but mm. I can't be the best me. Uh, what i would have been if i didn't have the family so you're not willing to sell them no yeah. not at all i mean <laughs> I think so. you know my wife sometimes maybe you know every dog yeah. has his day yeah you know yeah no i love you darling <laughs> she's such, uh, well she seems real cool man like it takes it it truly takes a special person to date well just date or marry to be one of us crackheads with, like right exactly i'm straight up right away there's a reason i don't have a girlfriend is because i'm straight up i'm a hard man to love darling I'm yeah a hard man to yeah. love yeah. no i mean so i do i mean i i don't want to say i would recommend if you're trying to make it like well i will say this because every ass every step i took in my life was to get to the point that i like i always i wanted to make it and i knew i would one day uh and i did but every step I took in my life was to make sure I got there. Like, you know, uh, I wouldn't get out of high school and, you know, go get married and have kids if you want to make it. Like, cause you probably just didn't make it by doing yeah. that. Um, now, at the same time, your family is more important than that. Yeah. But you can have a family d down the road. Right. Right. So if you if this is the life you want, you better get to it and then have the family. I'm not saying it can't be done, but it's gonna be really hard to do. Well, them kids, I mean, that's 250k a kid, and that's if they don't play hockey or you know something <laughs> like that, right? You know how many bass boats you can buy with that? Where are you getting that number? It's yeah. probably more than that. Million. Like with inflation, it's a million now. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was looking plus. at Reagan numbers. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, huh. we've got different numbers nowadays, boys. Yeah. Well, it's a weird world to raise kids in nowadays. You got iPads, iPhones, uh, 
artificial intelligence, uh, you know. Internet. Like, that's what's scary to me is it's a weird world out there now, and it's changing fast, and I don't know how I keep up with my kids. They're going to be, like... Yeah, I mean... I don't know how you can parent kids with, like, the internet parenting right. them now, you know. What well, the... I, yeah, this is me being me. Um, dude, the world's teaching our kids so many wrong things. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. I mean, majorly wrong things. And like, I don't want my kids listen to the TV, watch TV, listen to the uh-uh. radio. None of that. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, that is not okay. Thank you. Brian. That is not okay. Thank you. Yes. You know, uh, yeah, it's a screwed up world, boys. Yeah. It's a screwed up world. They're putting litter boxes in the schools now because the kids think they're cats. You know yeah, what people yeah. do to cats in the country? They shoot them. <laughs> Are you sure you want to be a cat? Are you sure? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like It's a messed up world. I'd start feeding them dry ass cat food and see how they like being a fucking cat. Right. <laughs> Jesus. Um, no, and that's a big reason why me and my wife decided to move down to Missouri is just Minnesota's getting, I mean... It's Minnesota. You know how it is. You still yeah. live there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we live 40 minutes outside a, a big town. We're out in the middle of nowhere. And just to be able to raise your kid in that. You know, yeah. There's no outside influence. It's yeah. chickens, turkeys, work. Yeah. I mean, there's still, you know, no matter how hard we try to hide from it, it's still there. They're still going to see it. But, you know, you you got to be the parent. You know, you got to teach them right from right. wrong. And, uh, you know, uh at some point, they have to make their own decisions. Right. Um, you just hope you get the right values instilled in them to make yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, they're, dude, we made mistakes. We did a lot of stupid stuff. We still do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> so, like, our kids are not going to be perfect. I know I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> and I'm not today. But, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just um, dude, our kids are our kids. You're not the world's. Right. The world doesn't have the right to teach them what's right and what's wrong. Right. Dude, I I respect that. And, like, there's this big live scope debate right now, right? Like, to me, it's like there's a big parenting debate. When do you let your kids have the iPad or the iPhone? Yeah. Because as soon as you do that, they're opened up to a new galaxy that you have zero control over. And if you put parental controls on, guess what? Them kids are smart. They'll figure out a way around right. around it, just like we did oh. when we wanted to see a pair of titties when we were kids. You know, we figured out a way. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did. We did, <laughs> dude. <laughs> like, oh, uh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like, I – and I remember my friend – all my friends had a cell phone before I did. We're talking the, the flippy oh, ones, yeah, right, yeah. that you used to – like, it was a T nine. Yeah, you remember yeah, that? Yeah. Remember you have to used to have to pay per text. Yeah, like and then your parents would get the bill and you'd like <laughs> get chewed out. You, oh, oh my yeah. god! Give like me that thing. Three hundred dollars a month for text. Yeah. I yeah. was like, uh-huh. what did you do? Now we got <laughs> unlimited everything, and it's you remember the ridiculous. Motorola Razor. Oh yeah. yeah, that was the coolest phone. Yeah, it was ever. All the yeah. cool kids had the Motorola. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I couldn't have that. No, I no. never had one. No, but no. it was cool. I had that. Cheap thirty dollar Nokia. Yeah, yeah, the little yeah. like it was. Yeah, yeah. trying or not triangle rectangle. Yeah, I yeah. played yeah. Snake on my mom's Nokia for like oh, yeah. number mm-hmm. of years, and then that that BlackBerry had its like. Yep. That was the mega bass for like mm-hmm. three years, and then uh, yep. Then oh. Steve Jobs like fuck you BlackBerry. <laughs> yeah, I had I had BlackBerry for a little while. And I then, liked my BlackBerry. Yeah, my BlackBerry was good. Yeah, and then I followed ever since. I think what's weird right now is there's so much information on the internet that like everything that was like a conspiracy theory in like the nineties and two thousands that is like proven true now. Yeah. You ever like dive down any of them rabbit holes? Like you got a tinfoil hat. Is there any conspiracy <laughs> theories that you like buy into? Uh, I, mean, I got a couple. Honestly, like I've never paid a lot of attention to the world. I mean, I, I, there's a lot of things that I can't change, you know. Uh, there's a like politics and that kind of stuff. There's mm-hmm. so much stuff going on that's so completely screwed up. Oh sure. But yeah. there's no, I can't have an influence on it. You can't change and, it. And like, I don't watch the news. I don't know what's going on in the world at all. I, at all. Well, they're lying they, anyway. So yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. You don't know so, anyway. So like. If I watch the news or any of that, all it's going to do is piss me off because there's never anything positive 
No. All it is is negative. Good news don't sell. And it, what am I going to do? What, am, what? How can I change it? I'm not. I can't. So I don't watch it. I stay a lot less pissed off. And, uh, yeah, I worry about what I can control. So, yeah. The, t- Just catch I don't a green know. fish. I think my favorite Sometimes. conspiracy theory that's not proven is Barack Obama's wife having a dick. <laughs> Have you heard that? Big Mike. Uh, <laughs> I mean, just to it's stuff like doctor see. photos with the, uh, <laughs> just like. Oh God! I think um, there's a lot of conspiracies going on nowadays. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Hey guys, Gaff with Waypoint English Supply here. Just wanted to highlight the fact that we have the big bass resource right here. Obviously, everybody in Minnesota knows about Kytex and the littler swim baits like these bait labs here. But we're here to have the big baits here in the store. We got Huddleston's. We've got the dangerous swim baits, the jointed claw glide baits, and the bull shooter glide baits. But it's not only the baits. We've got big rods, big reels, big line, and all that good stuff for you guys to go ahead and chase your biggest fish of your life. So swing on into Waypoint English Supply and get hooked up with the biggest tackle around. This podcast is brought to you by my compadre, my tournament partner, my brother, and the best rod builder above the Mason-Dixon line, Veselka Fishing and Customs. Specializing in custom fishing rods. That's right. Hand-built fishing rods, custom-made and tailored how you want, whether it's by length, action, specific technique, balance, or anything you want, anything, Veselka Fishing and Customs can build it. Mr. Veselka also has a wide variety of rods to choose from, which we've had a lot of fun with, perfecting and testing. The most unique and famous rod developed at Veselka Fishing and Customs is his custom Marabou hair jig rod. Have you thrown the old Canadian dinner mint, the Harry Gary, the Fighter Fly, the old Thin Lizzie? If you have then you know these little fluff balls can be hard to cast, especially at those key sizes as light as 1 16th of an ounce. Well, what if I told you you could cast that marabou jig 30 to 50% farther than you're casting it now? What if I told you you don't have to spook those shallow, skittish smallmouth? Well, with the custom hair jig rod from Veselka Fishing and Customs, not only can you cast a lot further, But the way this rod loads up on a long cast is pure perfection. This balanced rod has the perfect backbone with a light action parabolic taper that keeps those fish pinned without breaking your line. Mr. Veselka utilizes an 8 foot custom fly fishing blank converted to a spinning rod and couples it with premium guides leading up to custom fly guides that allow maximized casting distance and reduced line friction and blank slap, maximizing your overall performance, obviously. And we found this rod is not only perfect for marabou hair jigs, but for any light bait you need to cast far, including small swim baits, spy baits, and more. Any light bait you need to cast far, look no further than the Veselka Fishing and Customs Hair Jig Special. So head on over to his website, veselkafishing.com, that's V-O-C-E-L-K-A fishing.com, and treat yourself to the custom hair jig rod or any custom rod you can dream up. Yeah. It's a world of fear and, and misinformation. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, hmm. It's something. Is there bass fishing conspiracy theories that? Oh yeah, yeah I mean, maybe you, we can dig into that a little bit more. Uh we probably should. <laughs> we yeah. don't want to get this man yeah. fired tonight. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, uh, how about no? Okay. Yeah. I mean, or lawsuits. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> so, so speaking generally, that's like a thing I heard. Like, like some of these guys have lawyers, and like you say the wrong thing, like your face, you're you're the next Johnny Depp on fucking CNN, like fighting this crazy chick. You're going to have some chick pooping in your bed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I don't want to dig too deep into that. No, no, um, I got but, you, bro. like, dude, every place in life, somebody cheats. You know, that, you know, all they worry about is their self. Um, you know, people, <laughs> people cheat every place in life. 
not everybody, but there's somebody cheating in every aspect of life, whether it's uh, whether it's uh, on a test at school. I did that. Oh, um, me same. Uh, you know, a fishing tournament. Uh, who you know? Who knows? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> elections <laughs> i mean there's people cheating every aspect of life down the rabbit hole we go oh uh, you know so that being said there's cheating that happens in fishing yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. that's so fucked up to me yeah like because i value my sleep at night yeah and like that walleye scandal that came out it just opened up all these questions about like how many times have I taken second, you know, or, you know, like, you know, and how many times have I like played the game fair and square and someone's running away? Like, did you ever hear, you know, shortly after that guy stop, start talking about ice cubes mm -mm. locally? No. What are you talking about? Supposedly ice cubes and bellies because <laughs> they melt, but they add weight. Oh, you know? dude, that is the most fucked up shit I've ever heard. Are you serious? Yeah. Shortly after that, there was there was talk locally that there was guys that were possibly doing that. I don't know if it's true oh or not. God. I don't know how you would prove it. So you've got I me can't. intrigued here because on one hand, I'm like, wow, that's genius. <laughs> you know, not obviously not, not in, a, in good a good way. way. Right. right, right. But I agree. You know, how much but on the other hand, it's like, okay, how if it melts before you weigh the fish in, does the weight stay in the fish? If not, how long do you put it in before you take your fish up? You know? Right. Yeah. But, so it doesn't melt. I don't know. I mean, honestly, I don't care because I'm never going to try it and I'm never going to recommend anyone try it, but just be out of curiosity. Right. No, I'll let yeah. you try it right before you kill yourself. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I don't know. You know. And how much weight would that even add? It, I mean, you know, it can't be. But how many tournaments I won by? Exactly. I mean, them spotted bass derbies, it's like 12 and a quarter. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, 12 and two thirds. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. We're fucking, we just jumped 40 spots. Like, right. yeah. That's the thing. Them uh, spotted bass, it's all about that girth. Them smallmouth, it's all about that girth. Right. Yeah, but, you know, uh, once again, people cheat. People do wrong every aspect of life. Mm -hmm. The lie yeah. detector thing is the intriguing thing to me. Like, you guys, I don't know how it works with bass, but MLF, you just pay a fine, <laughs> which is super weird to me. Yeah, I mean, you know. How does it work with bass if you fail a lie detector? Like, did it, <laughs> they take the belt from you? I think so, yeah. 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 But here's my thing, like, and, you know, I'm not a whatever, but I don't believe there's any possible way that a lie detector is legit, period. You know, across the board, there's no way it's legit hmm. across the board. And that's my beliefs, obviously. So that being said, I don't think that, you know, our livelihood should be – a lie detector, something that's not admissible in court mm. should be a determining factor whether I get one, my paycheck took from me to uh, publicly called a cheater right. or whatever, yeah. whatever the situation is. There's other rules that's not true, you know, cheating. I mean, Jeff Sprague snagged one fish and he's literally nothing happened. Well, but but his reputation from snagging one fish, yeah, gone. Yeah, all it takes is snagging yeah. one fish. Your yep. reputation's gone. Yep. yep. So to your point about what's on the line with that lie detector, I mean, let's say you won fair and square, but you're nervous as hell. That, that lie detector. Yeah. And and dude, I've I've took three in my life, and knew good and well that I didn't break any rules. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's still all dude. I don't, Everybody I've ever talked to that's took one is like, dude, I was nervous as hell. And the three that I've took, I was nervous as hell. Because you still always think like, dude, what if this thing says I'm lying? Then I'm <laughs> going to be called a cheater. Then I'm going to lose my money. Then and you all lose of this. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's like, you know, that's, I don't agree with that. It's not admissible in court. So why should it be admissible here? Right. And 
but also that being said like if we are going to use it i think we should use it a lot more than we do okay you know i think if you qualify for the elites you should have to take one before you truly qualify did you cheat this year to qualify did you uh-huh. cheat in the opens to qualify yeah if you qualify for the classic you should have to take one did you break a rule did you cheat this year that's a really good point because the hard like the opens now i mean ain't the opens 10 years ago no no and you know there's stakes there's, are a lot higher as right. far as like that birth is that's your ticket in these guys' minds, right? Until you're on the stage, until you're at the Elite Series. So guys are doing whatever they can do to get there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, there's a lot of rumors. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know that they're all true. I'm 99.99% true that they are true about one particular person. Uh, and, and there's rumors that it's more than this one person. And like I said, I can't prove it. Mm-hmm. But this one particular person, I'm 99.99% sure, mm-hmm. bought waypoints all over the country last year for the Opens. Not only that, okay, the last Open of the year, if you're leading the points and you've got a 100-point lead over the whatever 8th, ninth place, 10th place that's not going to qualify, you're not qualified at the moment. But dude, you're gonna qualify. <laughs> so technically, you're you're not qualified. So you don't fall under the rules. You don't fall under the rules. So you can go get all the info you want legally, legally. Daddy, daddy, I need more money. I need more waypoints. I can't prove it. Wow. If I made enough phone calls, I probably could. I bet you could, and. At the end of the day, um, that's fucked up. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because there's a lot of but honest there, people. Yeah, out all right. There. So that being said, dude, there's people that are already fishing elites that do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, and you know, all right, that's speculation. I can't say, oh, I know this guy is, or I think this guy is. Like, but also there's people that have you know the reputation of that fished FLW over the years where. You know, you can get all the info whenever mm-hmm. until whatever twenty days before the tournament, and they won a lot of tournaments, and then now they're on the elites, <laughs> and they very rarely catch a check, cash a check, but then they go fish open where th- twenty five days before the tournament, and they they win opens. You know, so so that, that so, so that being said, like yeah. it looks like they're staying within the rules. So I applaud them for that. Like if it's not breaking a rule, and it's you know. If it's not breaking a rule, it's like, and not ethical, ethical, I'm good with it. You know, in the opens, I call my buddies and get info before the off limits. If it's, it's a rule. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not yeah. saying, hey, I'm such and such. You know, I heard you're really good at this late. You know, how much for your waypoints? Or how much for you to take? I'm ne- that's, that's not ethical. That's about as sleazy as it gets, like, in my mind. And yeah. And there ain't long-term <laughs> gains to be had with that either. No. Like, it's a really just a... It, it it's a short term fix as a guy who takes a lot of pride in the shit I figured out. And I can't imagine a guy like you that takes a lot of pride in the shit that you figured out and the shit people taught you. I mean, it's a, it comes down to sleep at night, right? But there's narcissists out there that yeah. don't give a fuck. Like yeah. I, I'm like, I'm not that guy. So like, I'm not going to sleep good, but you know, Johnny or Scotty over here, He's a narcissist. He sleeps fine. He just freaking right. stole it all, but yeah. he just yeah. he sleeps good because he's a narcissist. That's the problem I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's more important things in life than than making it or winning it or, dude. Like, if I could provide a living for my family and do it the right way, and hey, don't I know I'm calling people out un directly. You're doing a really good job, but of that, but. I, I'm not sitting here saying I don't make mistakes because I do. We all do. Um, We're humans. You know, but I'm not going to intentionally do something like that. Like, I may intentionally, um, I don't know, say, no, nah, dude, I didn't get any bites today. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, whatever. That's just the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah, there's things I do, and I do it intentionally that are it's wrong. It's called good defense. But, 
Uh, yeah, yeah. I, dude, if it's not all about winning, we all want to do it, but it's not. It's like you live your life the right way. You try to, you work hard. You live your life the right way. If you can provide a living for your family, doing that, that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I love that. I love that. And I guess. I credit a lot of the guys, you know, you learn a lot from people. And when I was a kid, you know, there's people who showed me stuff and I did everything I could as a kid to make sure I showed them some stuff back. Right. And gave it back to them. And your relationship with thrift, I guess, what's the coolest thing that you learned from Brian thrift? Like if you had one takeaway from that dude, what would it be? Uh, I don't know. One thing and I feel like I already kind of had this to an extent too, but like, I mean, dude, it's, we, we spent so much time together and over the years it's, it all runs together. But I remember a long, long time ago, you know, it's dude, he's Brian Thrift. At, even at that point, he had already won a lot. He was already a huge name and it didn't matter who you are. You walk up to him, you know, he just treats you like you, you're his best friend, you know? Yeah. And you, he's just very genuine and I remember him saying something about arrogant people. And since that day, like, it's like, it doesn't matter who, how big you are. Don't think that you're bigger than anything. And I, I despise arrogance. Me too. Really. Despise <laughs> arrogance. Nothing I don't worse. care if you win every single tournament you ever fish. If you win every single anything you try to do. You're not better than me. I like that, man. A you lot. might be better at me than this. Yeah, today. But you're not better than me. Yeah. And, and you're – I. there's no reason – there's no excuse for anybody to be arrogant whatsoever. Dude, that, I wasn't expecting that. That's awesome advice. And um, it's hard, right, because I, I consider myself a humble guy, and I almost think that it can be a weakness sometimes. You know what I mean? Like – Yeah. Like – you know, some guys who win a lot, they're they're a lot cockier. They're a lot, you know, you could call it confidence. You call it they come across a little arrogant. And, like, sometimes I wish I had a little more of that in me, but yet I hate it. But yet I get beat by that yeah. sometimes. So, like, there's balance to it, too. Well, yeah, I think, you, you know, you can still be confident, but don't just say when somebody comes up and tells you good luck today, don't tell them save your luck for somebody that needs it. Ooh. you know it's like that's yeah, that's yeah, two yeah. different things yeah, you know right, yeah. it's like hey i appreciate it man thank you yeah. yeah well brian brian thrift doesn't just take like anybody under his wing so i think there's probably some shit you've shown that guy too yeah i, I oh, guess yeah. what what's the coolest thing you've ever taught him oh I, dude i don't know i mean I, everything <laughs> yeah no i mean like i've taught him a lot you know mm -hmm. and most it's more baits than anything yeah, uh, yeah. And, and he's a bait guy too you know he sees a lot of stuff that at the same time i do but he i, I find out about baits before most people yeah um i would say the coolest thing i've ever showed him or you know passed on to him it, it probably was a, some type of bait cool yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, you know that more so than a technique yeah well i mean there's a way to go about that when you look up to somebody or something and and uh you know connecting with that person and and there's a right way to go about it and you obviously did that the right way with him and and both of you i think benefited from that yeah yeah it's a give yeah. and take yeah and you know it never was like oh man i need to be your friend so i can gain something you yeah. know it's just like we Hold just kind of let me spit on my hand first mr yeah. thrift like, no. yeah yeah we just i mean we just hit it off and and uh you know we just click like we think a lot alike in a lot of ways but then in a lot of other ways we're like completely opposite you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh kind of that yin and that yang yeah i guess i mean like he i don't know i don't know how to explain it but there are, you know, things just in general that we are on completely different pages about. Sure, sure. But that's why you're Brian New. And yeah. He's Brian Thrift. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that Hartwell thing, man. I, man, I got humbled down there. I'm gonna make it quick because you're probably sick of hearing about Lake Hartwell. But first time we went down there, you know, I 
tried to do the Casey Ashley thing and it was way too early. And, you know, I'm a Minnesota boy. I'd never seen a lake like that before. And, uh, we, you know, we caught our you know, 10 to 13 pounds of spots and, you know, called it a day in middle of the pack finish. And there was three teams that it was like they were fishing a different tournament than me. Yeah. Three, three teams had giant bags of largemouth, and we just felt like, was this that team championship in the you, fall? Yep. Like five or six years ago? 2019. Yeah. Yeah. yeah five yeah. years ago. Yeah. And yep. it was like, yeah, it was like 28. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I and I just that. was like, man, why didn't we grab our balls run up a creek? Like, yeah. well, what the yeah. fuck are we doing here? Like, they don't, like, there's nothing for third, there's nothing for a top 10 in this bitch. You have to take a top three here. We're not, like, there's no point. So then we go down not last year but two years ago we qualified again and i went all in on largemouth and we had a great practice but then the weather flat calm sunny like the opposite of practice there was definitely a morning herring deal and then inclement weather definitely seemed to help them largemouth bite throughout the day and then we had fog delays both days my shit's 40 minutes away And by the time we got to our spot, it's like Mm -hmm. outside the bite window and, you know, spotted bass one and locals one was spotted bass that year. So I went down and fished for spots, got my ass kicked by a largemouth. And the next time I went down and I fucking swung the bat and got my ass kicked by fucking spots. Hartwell's a different place. Yeah. It is. I mean, it's literally a lake. It can take 13, it can take. Yeah, it could take 13 pounds to win today and 29 tomorrow. Yeah. 27. 27. (laughs) Got it. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you may not see another 20 pound bag for two months. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, it's a weird lake. They live there. They, it's rare that it's like that, though. And, um, it's a, I don't think I would ever do real good in a one day tournament at Hartwell. But I've done, I've had very bad and very good tournaments at Hartwell in the multi-day events. Yeah. Um, I'm typically either really good or really bad there. You know, I think uh, the last, I did fishing one day there this fall. Didn't practice or nothing, just showed, or last fall. Just showed up and caught a lot of fish. I mean, a lot of fish, never got a big bite. And well, I mean, yeah, I was large, strictly large mouth fishing, you know, yeah. I was swinging, but I was blew my mind that I got that many bites, never caught a big one. And then the two tournaments before that were the open in the fall before, which I finished third in mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then the classic that same year. Um, I and I, remember, right? I led the first day yeah. and I think I finished eighth or ninth, somewhere around there. You're throwing um, a bad little dude, I think. Some, some, you know, not, not, not exclusively by any means, but some. And, I mean, you know, those, in both of those tournaments, I was exclusively largemouth fishing. Except for, now the open, the open, I fished for heronfish all day the first day. And I was in like 97th place. <laughs> and I was so far back, I knew the only way to catch a big enough bag uh, you know, to get a check was to go up the river. Swing, baby. And I ran 20 miles up that river, and it didn't work, and something it clicked. I said, I got to go. And I come 20 miles down and 35 miles up. What? And <laughs> the second cast, I called a four-pounder. And then I go on to catch the biggest bag of the tournament that day. That's and, some gangster shit. So I went from 97th to 7th to 3rd. Big bulls. Yeah, That's a big run. Balls. That is. That That's is. That's a run. That is. All right, so we want to talk about big bulls. Big bulls, yeah. Um, the first <laughs> the first tournament, I'll never forget this, that I made a decision like that and it worked, was the Race Cot Championship in 2000. I won it in 19. So it was 17. So 18, I didn't fish it. 17, to the first uh, race got championship was at Old Hickory. Practice was junk. No good. 
first day gets canceled because of rain, just weather. We got a lot of rain and bad wind. So the first day of the tournament, I just ran everything I knew on the lower end, and it wasn't working. And I actually, I caught nine short fish. I was like, I'm going to zero. Like, I was like, I'm going to zero today. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Everything, every situation I knew, everything I knew about this place, which was not that much. You know, it was just that practice week. And I said, there was one on the bed 45 miles up the river. And I seen a couple fish sunning. You know, they wasn't in bed, and I just seen them sunning in practice. said, well, maybe that one's still on the bed. Maybe the mother ones are spawning now. I get up, I run all the way up there, bouncing off of stuff, floating the whole way. I get up there, turn in the mouth of the creek, blowed out, trashed. No. I was like, I can't turn around. So I just, I picked up my greenfish all-purpose jig, started going down the bank. I went, I don't know, 25 yards, six-pounder. Giant, giant on that place. Went a little bit longer, big one, big one. I had like 19-something that day, I think, and uh, was in second place. And, yeah, so the second day, I went back, caught one fish in that creek. I was able to make it work somehow, somewhere, somewhere else. So I move on. I fell. I fell down. And then the last day, I was like, ah, just hang out down here. You know, I made a little bit of money. Fish around, fish around. I catch one. I was like, I'm not going to catch another bass. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I was like, I seen this one creek on Google Earth about 20 miles above the other one. Because I know I can't go back to the other one. I know it's done. You know, I caught every fish in there that, you know, yeah, it, yeah. it was done. You drug them out. Yeah. So I go to this creek, I don't know, 55, 60 miles away that I've never seen in my life. I don't know if there's a dam well, i knew there wasn't a dam but i didn't know if there was a bar that i couldn't get over to get to it I, i've never been there and i did the math you know with my gas like if i go straight there straight back i have three gallons of gas left so i went straight there bounced off stuff the whole way <laughs> caught caught the biggest bag of the day i think one of the biggest it was it, no my buddy finished second caught the biggest bag of the day but i caught a big bag Bounced on stuff all the way back, had three gallons of gas left, and finished third. And uh, But that being said, that's the first tournament that I took that huge leap of faith. Yeah, yeah. And it worked out. And I did it the first day as well as the second day. You know, yeah. the second, or I mean as well as the third day. The second day, I, I didn't take a big risk. I went, you know, with what I learned this first day, and it was no good anymore. So day three, I had to. T I didn't have any choice. Yeah, it was yeah. either live or die. Yeah. So I lived. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big balls. Big balls. And if you grab your balls like that and it works, it's probably easier to do it again. Yeah, it right? is. It to is. Your point. It is. Yeah. 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 So, um, do you get a tingle? <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Or I used to. You know. I used to, not so much anymore. But you shave them, like, or do you keep them long to get the extra, like, you know, like, it's like Cherokee Man, Indian shit, right? Slightly yeah. manicured, <laughs> there I guess. Uh, but no, uh, so you know, I think I, I I got on a really big run of doing really well, and it really started in night, actually the fall of eighteen, and went on through you know, my first year of the elites, but it, it got to a point where, and once again, you know, going back, like I hate arrogance, but there's a difference between arrogance and confidence, but like things were going so well, it didn't matter how many wrong decisions I made. I knew the next one was going to be right. And when it was wrong, I knew the next one was going to be right. And then when it was wrong, guess what? I knew the next one was going to be right. Well, it was still wrong, but guess what? Eventually, it was right. Right. There's something to be said about that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it's. I think that's. 
you can call that confidence. You can call that faith. You can call that a lot of different things. But I mean, I honestly think is you just having faith and knowing that you know everything's going to work out. Just right. keep working hard, doing right. Let it happen. Just, Sometimes you got to let things happen and not make. It's them so happen. hard to do because we give a shit, right? Yeah. And we want to force it. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I I can't find my phone, and I got to make sure Wesley ain't calling me or something. <laughs> so give me one moment. You guys oh. keep chatting. Yeah. So, but yeah, I don't know. You um, keep on keeping on. It's just yeah. fishing. Yeah. 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 But it, it's very easy to get away from that. You very. Know, one one bad day can ruin it all. Oh. Easily, but one gay one good day can turn it around again completely. Can you guys call my phone or something? Like, fuck. I don't know. How do you lose a How do you lose your phone? Wesley Gore is probably pissed right now. <laughs> well, I'm about ready for some dinner. I don't know about you boys. Yeah, yeah, oh. it's about that time. I'm starving. <laughs> we had a damn good lunch. What was that restaurant called again? The Smoke. 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 Just, yeah, just we smoke. didn't even smoke, but they were smoking all the meats in there, and it was fucking good. Had a uh, brisket mac and cheese, phenomenal. That does sound good. That had brisket amazing. tacos, and they were wonderful. But Very good. Brian knew, dude. This was an honor, dude. Thank you again. Yeah, yeah. yeah my pleasure. I'll let you my get pleasure. some food now, but yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'll, yeah. Hopefully, I uh, won't get fired. <laughs> I, I think we, I think we, I think we navigated. Yeah, that good, man. You, 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 you might. I know you're not into politics, but you make a good one. You did a good job. Uh, yeah. No, you know, I it's hard for me to to have a filter sometimes, and you know, I kind of say what I want to say or what I what I feel, <laughs> and uh, people sometimes like that. I just gotta clean it up slightly, a little bit. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, like people people are people, and yeah. you're a person, yeah. and people don't like sugar coated yeah. bullshit. No, no. So nice work, man. Yeah, and, if you if it if I say it. It's not bullshit. <laughs> yeah, dude. I learned yeah. this from Stevie Menz. You can say anything you want as long as it's the truth, man. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. dude, how was your first Bass Galaxy experience? This, huh? We're in a new dimension. This well, we is get, intergalactic. We, we get to we get to get into this uh, hideaway tackle box now. So get into the goods from yeah, where the yeah. supply now. So, uh, um, well, this was interdimensional. This was intergalactic. This is like extra extra awesome. So. Uh, last question before we go. Do you believe in aliens? No. No. What is up no, with these I don't. Like, What is up with these pros? No. They don't, like, no. all right, so no I'll chance? say this. All right, so I don't believe in them whatsoever. But when I was a kid, I'd stay up late at night. You know, we had like four TV channels. For some reason, it seemed like late at night, the alien shows would come on or movies. And like, I was paranoid. Scared to death of aliens. And me and my brother used to coon hunt a lot. And you so obviously we were out walking in the woods in the middle of the dark. And there was this one trail that we always went down. Well, there was there's these two trees that were glow, growed close together. Well, the trail went through them. For some reason, I can't tell you why. Don't know why. But I thought if you walked between those trees that the aliens would get you. <laughs> so you had to go around the trees. <laughs> <laughs> See, they got your bike, dude. The yeah, aliens, yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah, watch out for those two trees. <laughs> it, it's funny. Like I don't know, fifteen years ago, I went down that same path, and there's those same two trees, Did and I just kind of sh- no, I should shook my head. <laughs> you, walked, you finally went through them. I went through. I was good. I'm still here. No abductions. <laughs> dude, that's yeah. awesome. All right. Yeah. yeah. Teal's Bass Galaxy checking in, checking out.